A no commentary version of this run can be found in the pinned comment in the comments section below. This video's content has been slightly modified from its original format to comply with the requirements of YouTube's ad policy. Early ad-free access to original uncut versions of all my videos can be found on my Patreon for as little as $1 per month. Please check out the pinned comment in the comment section below for a link to my Patreon. This video is intended as a game walkthrough. It is not a speedrun. All strategies in this video were made for efficiency and success rate. Please watch the entire video and listen carefully to the commentary before trying any of these strategies for yourself. Hello everyone, this is a no damage playthrough of Dead Space Remake on hard difficulty. So you're probably wondering, why do I have impossible in parentheses? Why did I clickbait you? And the answer is, because hard mode and impossible mode are actually the same difficulty. Impossible mode just has permadeath. I will be doing an impossible mode video later though. job you turned down with six months apart with only fit calls it's rough easy to say the wrong thing I don't blame you I'd listen to my girlfriend over Hammond reciting security protocols forewarned is forearmed Miss Daniels so you keep saying here we go nice clean re-entry imagine six months staring at that chunk of rock to an independent miner, that's paradise. Aegis 7 is one of the richest finds in CEC history. Some prospecting team set up for life. Now where is she? There. Confirming visual contact with USG Ishimura. What a beauty. Biggest planet cracker in her class, you know. And it looks like they already popped the cork. Why is it so dark? We should be able to see our running lights. Yeah. I'll get us into hailing range. Someone's got to be waiting up for us. Just be careful on the approach. I'm not taking any chances with the CEC's pride and joy. No chances, huh? Is that why you were digging into my personnel files before we left? You track your file access? I'm a computer analyst. Comes with a job. I ran standard CEC background checks, Miss Daniels. If you want to work in the big leagues, you have to play ball. <coughs> Sir, we're in hailing range. USG Ishimura, this is the emergency maintenance team of the USG Kelly responding to your distress call. Come in, Ishimura. Ishimura, do you copy? Come in. This is the USG Kelly. You ever hear of a full communications black on one of these things? Never. Come on. Someone pick up the damn phone. The hell is that? Sounds like their communication array is busted. Maybe a broken encoder. Daniels and I can handle it in 48 hours, Max. Hey, that gives you plenty of time to catch up with Nicole. Yeah, I hope so. Jen, Johnson, take us in. Gravity tethers engaged. Automated docking. Let's go. I'm losing control. Fuck! 
Daniel! Guidance system override isn't responding. Shit, shit, we're coming in too hot. It's gonna smash us into the hall. Jen, aim for that emergency stabilizer. There, the blue light. It might slow us down. Got it. Drop the flash shield. Everyone fix yourself. <laughs> Better than a broken neck. Or worse. Good call on the stabilizer, Isaac. Gotta always read the manual. What the fuck's going on with flight control? That guidance system's a death trap. Better add it to your repair list. Jen, what's our damage? Comfort down. We lost support booster. We got a fire in one of the stabilizers and... Singularity core's a mess. Could be worse, but not by much. Then let's get some help. Johnston, stay with the Kellyan. We'll send a medic. Everyone else, with me. This is also the uh, PC version. Yeah, down hard. Not a great start to our repair Standard procedure, Ms. Daniels. We'll register them in the flight lounge. Hello? Where is everybody? Half the ship must have heard that landing. Be proud, Chen. You gotta see her in one piece. Johnson might disagree. But you're off to buy the first round. I wouldn't mind something to study my nerves, especially on CEC staff. You see anyone in flight control? No. Nobody. I also grabbed as many files as I can find, so... At least we didn't take out the sign. Pause the video if you want to read them. I try to scroll and stop for three seconds to enable that, so... May as well get signed in. Chief Engineer Jacob Temple. Location? Error. Employee not found. I can't read security. Same for the Chief Engineer. What is wrong with their comms? Okay, well, maybe not that file, but it's so early in the game that you can read it yourself. Someone left in a hurry. Where's the security detail? Where's anybody? There's nothing logged. No duty roster, no power to the elevator. For God's sake. That security console's still working. Isaac, get a damage report. I'm done playing around. I also tried to get as much, as many things as I could get. Does anyone else smell that? Smell what? Probably not a complete 100% run though, because I did miss a few upgrades and schematics oh. somewhere. Smell. What have you got, Isaac? Shit. It's not just comms or the guidance system. Half the Ishimura's in the red. Engines, hull, the trams. Who could do that kind of damage to a planet cracker? Power. Ventilation's up. Power to the elevators. Positive anomaly detected. Quarantine activated. Another malfunction? No. The quarantine systems are all fine. But wait, do you hear that? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, I hear it. Yeah, man. Take it easy. Daniels, get those elevators running. There's something in here with us. Up there! These guys you can just run straight through. Yeah, the only thing that I missed as far as I could tell was like the final contact beam upgrade, which was apparently in a master chest that I'm pretty sure I went to. Maybe my inventory was full? I don't know. We'll get to that point in the video though, and I'll explain. So one of the first major differences in uh, the remake as opposed to the original game is that the, uh, the necromorphs are a lot easier to dodge. Like, if a Necromorph swings at you, you can actually, like, step out of the way, which was something that you absolutely could not do in the original Dead Space. Because the enemies had insane tracking in the original Dead Space. So your only way to avoid attacks was to uh, interrupt their attack with, like, hit stun from one of your own guns or through stasis. Security request retrieved. It's done. We shot that fucker right between the eyes and it didn't die! Smith had to shoot its fucking arms and legs off! For God's sake, send help! Isaac. Oh my God, Isaac. You made it. Just. They're everywhere. Chen. Is he? He's gone. Nothing I can do. What the fuck are these things? The ones I saw. Some of them were wearing Ishimura uniforms. They're the crew? How the hell can they be the crew? Look at them. We need to get to the bridge. There's a thousand people on board. Someone will be there. We can't. The tram system's wrecked. Everything's locked down because of the quarantine. And you're both repair techs. So how do we do this? There's a broken tram car blocking the tunnel. It's gridlocked the system. And the data board's burned out. I can't lift the lockdown or call the tram until we get a spare from the maintenance bay. But it's all on Isaac's side of the quarantine. I'll handle it. Just make sure there's power to the repair systems. And Isaac? Yeah? I'm sure Nicole's okay. She's a doctor, right? She'll do the smart thing. Yeah. Yeah, she always does. Find somewhere safe. I'll be back soon. So, yeah, as I mentioned before, the only difference between uh, Impossible Mode and Hard Mode is that uh, Impossible Mode has permadeath. So if you die in Impossible Mode, the game gives you the opportunity to continue on Hard Difficulty, which, once again, mechanically is the same thing. You just get an achievement for beating the game on Impossible Mode. But impossible mode is also very easy to cheese. Because you can quit out and reload the save before you die. Isaac, don't bother shooting those fuckers in the head. Doesn't even slow them down. Okay. 
The only way is hacking them apart. Those arms, their legs. Does that even kill them? Or do they just stop moving? Message retrieved. Vents into engineering. You got a stasis module handy? We need one in tram maintenance stat. The autoloader's fried. I got a damaged tram car on the tracks, and if the whole system's gridlocked, guess who they're calling? Temple here, sending a stasis module now. What happened to the autoloader? No idea. A lot of shit's been breaking down. I keep hearing things. Down in the gears where, where no one could be. You know? I know. Prepare systems online. Loading system reinitialized. Warning. Autoloader malfunction. Please contact a repair technician. So once we hit the first switch, we start encountering necromorphs in this room. Uh, one of my go-to strats against the uh, lower the lower level necromorphs when there's just individual necromorphs is I just use stasis and I run up to them and I stomp them. Yeah, somehow this guy just uh, completely missed. No clue how that happened, but it worked. And also, you have a stasis refill in this room, so you can literally just do this as much as you like. But if there's more than one necromorph in the room, that's when you want to uh, start shooting them instead. Replacing damaged tram car. Please stand by. There's also a power node in this room as well. So yeah, being that this is week one of the game being out, and I'm only like just now getting my feet wet, this run is heavily segmented. The intent is not really to uh, impress anyone or anything. It's mostly just here to uh, help people in their own playthrough of the game. But I do intend to do more videos of, like, harder challenges and whatnot. I have at least two more videos planned. I have my doubts that I'll do a no save, no damage in this game. But I do want to do Plasma Cutter only. Oh, that's one down. You said a data board was fried, too? Inventory says there's a spare board in the maintenance bay. We can't run the trams without it. So yeah, subscribe to my channel. Stay tuned for that. Leaper jump scare in the vents above us. We can just completely ignore him. That door opens later. In the interest of conserving ammo early on, I'm going to crutch pretty heavily on this uh, stasis and stop strategy. It's also pretty funny to listen to Isaac cuss at the Necromorphs. This guy's playing dead. We'll stasis him before he gets up and stomp the crap out of them. Before we head to the maintenance bay, we're going to uh, reroute the power to be able to open this door. That one went up in the vents and uh, we're gonna get a jump scare over here.
pick up this node. All of the content in this game is uh, pretty one-to-one -one with the original game. But all of like the siege sections where like the quarantine room sections and similar. There's fewer enemies. I would say that uh, Motive Games definitely fixed a lot of the uh, balance issues that I had when playing the original Dead Space. So like all of the uh, scripted encounters actually have like fewer enemies, but they kind of offset that with the aggressor AI. I'll go into detail with what the aggressor AI system is a little later. Probably uh, if at some point in the game I come to a point where uh, the aggressor AI kicks in. But all you need to know is that backtracking can't hurt. As soon as this guy pops out, we're just going to shoot that barrel, kill him. There's a medium med pack right there. That guy right there, as soon as he uh, comes around the corner, we can hit that barrel. Then this guy is going to come over here. Another enemy as well. Depending on where you are in the room, that's where enemies are likely to spawn behind vents and uh, break them down and come in. I believe there's a lot more barrels in this room in the remake than there are in the original game. A little thing about ammo spawns as well. So ammo spawns randomly in crates. Uh, drop frequency depends on the uh, particular ammo type. But you will only get ammo for guns that are in your inventory. And because we have the plasma cutter only right now, we're only going to be getting plasma cutter drops. There's three necromorph bodies over here. One of these is actually alive. At the time of this recording, I didn't know if all of the necromorphs would get up once you've toggled the uh, the lights off to be able to get into the door downstairs. So I just decided to uh, weasel this guy over the edge. Although I probably would have done just as well just going ahead and stomping him. Which is what I decided on. And because our bad guy is right there, I decided to go ahead and shoot him in the leg. With the plasma cutter, the easiest way to kill necromorphs, the uh, standard necromorphs, is to shoot them in the leg and then shoot their arm off. That's the easiest way to kill them without stasis. If you have stasis, then go ahead and dismember both of their arms. That file right there is pretty useless uh, exposition. Once we've turned off the lights, more enemies are going to spawn in. I turned off the elevator over here so that I could turn on the light because this is actually a pretty cramped area. So you might as well just get all the visibility that you can. I only wanted to use my stasis in this room in the event of an emergency because there was no stasis refill.
more enemies will spawn downstairs once we go down the elevator, but power for the elevator is off, so I ran back to turn it on. come down here. Like I said, more enemies spawn. I wasn't able to blow up that barrel through that railing over there. I'm going to wait for this guy to come around the corner. He got lit up. That guy ran for me. He would have been a prime candidate for a stasis. There's another body on the floor over there on the other side. Which wasn't there before. No, that was that was the body that I pushed over, wasn't it? No, it's a different one. I guess one just like also spawns there as like one that just kind of plays dead. Isaac, we can't stay here much longer. Hearing a lot of movement. Hold on, I got the data board. I'm coming back to tram control now. Daniel, get ready to go. <laughs> I guess this was the part of the run where I wasn't sure whether or not I wanted to pause to uh, read the files. So I apologize for that. Like starting from chapter two onward, I'm very sure that I start reading, that I start stopping so people can read the files if they pause the video. Otherwise, any of the ones that I've skipped so far, you can easily look those up on like the fandom wiki or something like that. Because people usually copy those. Yeah, just take this whole area nice and easy. There's only a finite number of enemies that spawn here. I don't remember how many enemies uh, spawn in downstairs. You can also generally only uh, see whenever you uh, have your gun raised, which is one of the annoying things about cutting the lights as well. This is also probably going to be a question that I get a fair bit, but uh, these strats will absolutely work on console. Because there are no, uh, there are no tricks that uh, happen as a consequence of having a high frame rate. So I play on keyboard and mouse just because I prefer to use keyboard and mouse in games that have free aim like this. Team lockdown is lifted, so you can get to the hangar. Comms are still down, though, so be ready for anything. What's the plan? You and Johnston fix up the Kelly. We report to the bridge. Standard emergency protocol. What? Protocol? Hammond, people are dying here. And I'm not losing anyone else. We stick to procedure. We'll get through this. 
we'll see. One very good question that is worth knowing the answer to is how can you differentiate the ones playing dead versus the ones not playing dead? And the answer is simple. If you see one laying down, try using Kinesis on it. But we don't get Kinesis during Chapter 1. Fortunately, all the ones that do play dead are all scripted. So first up, we're going to go into the supply room here and loot it. power node in here too. So absolutely worth it to come in here. It can take an upward of uh, six stomps to kill a necromorph with the uh, stasis and stomp strategy. But because we'd have to backtrack a pretty long way to refill our stasis, I'm not going to crutch on this. I want to save my stasis for the Leapers later in the chapter anyway. There's no survivors. Daniels is trying to get into the command computer. I need you to listen. The Ishimura's overrun with... the fucking monsters. You didn't hear anything? What? No, the comms are still out. Isaac... We need to kill him fixed now. Got a damage report? Uh, yeah, it, it's there. So Leapers are some of the biggest jerk enemies in this game. Also be very mindful about your ammo. I probably would have been better off using Stasis on that first Leaper. But they are pretty far away. Isaac, what's happening? Justin's gone. Kelly and two. Singularity core overloaded. No! Kellyan was our only way home. We're trapped. No! I'm not losing two good people for nothing. What about the command computer? It's a brick. All the primary systems are locked down with the captain's codes. So we find Captain Matthias. Track his rig. Okay. Okay, here. Captain Benjamin Matthias. Location medical. Status. Deceased? Even the captain? God. Isaac, you're closer to medical. You can double back and cut through maintenance. Find the captain's body and get his rig. With his codes, we... What was that? Shit. 
Mädchen? I will say, though, it's not very common when a remake of a game comes along and acts, actually kind of knocks my socks off. I was actually really surprised that the remake of Dead Space turned out to be as good as it is. I mostly did a no-damage run of Dead Space 1 completely out of spite. So because this is a no damage run, I am going to sell most of my healing items. I can also sell, like, one stack of ammo here. Get more power nodes. If you take less damage, you can afford more power nodes. Also, stasis recharges are always super good to have. I always try to have two. As you can see, I also sold all of my uh, plasma cutter to be able to afford a new suit. I wanted this suit for the inventory upgrade. One of the very first things that I upgrade is stasis. But given that stasis is pretty plentiful this early on, upgrading your plasma cutter is also a very good move because it takes fewer shots in order to be able to dismember necromorphs. Because I have only a limited number of power nodes and a limited number of weapons that I have actually experimented with, I only really use maybe like four or five different guns. But uh, whenever I do a New Game Plus video, I will hopefully be able to uh, experiment more with other guns. So now that we have the stasis module, we can pick up items from further away, and we can also throw necromorph limbs back at necromorphs. Gives us a bit of a tactical advantage. Bronze semiconductor hidden here. Bronze semiconductor is worth a thousand. A thousand credits. Sorry, we have the telekinesis module. The kinesis module. I, I keep mixing up telekinesis and stasis. I'm sorry. Gotta hold the line. They all came back. The pulse rifle in general 
is a very good gun to have because the alt fire pops off a grenade. So it's very good for uh, wall guardians and for mobs of enemies if you can round them up together. Station now accessible. Thank you for your patience. This is the first uh, Dead Space game where you actually do not buy any weapons. You just find them just straight up in the wild. Isaac, have you heard from Daniel? We were attacked. She ran the other way. No, nothing. Yeah, we ran across a slaughterhouse. They barricaded access to the morgue. The morgue? Yeah, but the barricade was put together in a hurry. A hydrazine tank might blow it open. We just need a detonator, like maybe a shock pad. The coal could be through there if... Isaac, the one who attacked us. I swear to God it was Chen. But I saw him die. If they barricaded the morgue, maybe it was to keep something in. Okay, bronze is actually worth 2,000. I do wish that you could use uh, stores during a uh, video call in the remake. You could do that in the original game, but I assume they probably did it this way because otherwise the game would like glitch out or something. Always take note of your stasis recharge modules, because stasis is your best friend. Once we walk over here, we'll have one necromorph pop out of the vent. Scripted encounter. Once we put in the battery over here, we can switch the uh, junction box to either the elevators or uh, one of the doors on the other side of the room here. In the original game, this door could be opened if you expended a power node. Required. Patient log retrieved. I had the tests on patient Harris Rankin. Given the reports from the colony, he's lucky to have his faculties at all. Well, a divine experience would leave an impression on anyone's mind. Perhaps. I saw nothing divine in all that blood. The suicide. The sense of disorientation, Terrence. We just need more insight to TK module up here as well. So as I was saying about the uh, node locked doors, uh, instead there is a security clearance system, so you no longer spend nodes in order to open doors. There's no power node in the uh, vacuum of space here this time.
There is a semiconductor right here, though. And a little box up here. The Wishbone Achievement, by the way, can be gotten here, uh, at least in the current patch. If you use Telekinesis to grab the legs of one of these suits here and shoot it back. What's happening there? Did you find Nicole? No sign of her yet. But I found some hydrazine that should work on the barricade. I just need to find a shock pad. Okay. Work fast, Isaac. Entering zero gravity. We're never coming back into this room here, so we'll just go ahead and let that uh, leaper leap and go around it, and then land and leave. What the hell? It shut the whole ship. I'll check it out. Entering vacuum. In order to exit, we have to go up here this time. The zero gravity in this game functions like it does in Dead Space 2 and Dead Space 3. Fortunately, instead of the awkward jump from wall to wall system from the first game. Leapers can also be uh, stasis and stomped to death. Like with standard necromorphs. We're still in zero gravity here. God. Took one step out of the captain's net and chance him. That thing. He almost got me. You okay? Exiting I trapped him in a damaged escape pod. He's snarling like this is fucked up. Hurry, Isaac. Medium med pack on top of the pipe here. Also, in every vent, uh, there's there's fan blades. Whenever a necromorph pops out of a vent, look for a fan blade. You can shoot it back at a necromorph with kinesis and dismember their limbs that way. Before proceeding, I wanted to refill my stasis. Stasis recharge mechanics are exactly like they are in Dead Space 1 as opposed to Dead Space 2 or Dead Space 3, so there's no cooldown timer. You can recharge stasis as many times as you like. Hazardous anomaly detected. Quarantine activated. 
if you pick up these uh, these rods over here, they will actually kill a Necromorph in one shot. There is a table up here you can destroy as well. Which will give you more rods. After these first two enemies, uh... Maybe like one or two more will spawn in up here. But after three enemies, uh, now is a good time to just pick these up and drop them over the edge. Because the majority of the enemy encounters in this, uh, quarantine room are gonna be downstairs. And after dropping those over the railing, we can pick them up. Grab them. Mm, shuck them. Grab them. Shuck them. Break this one. Grab them. Chuck them. Quarantine lifted. Also, if you kill a necromorph by impaling it, it will drop its item exactly where it is. So you don't have to stomp it in order to get an item. Personal log, Dr. Nicole Brennan. With medication and zero-G therapy, patient Harris is showing improvements. If this continues, there might be hope for the others on Aegis 7. However, Dr. Marcia continues to interfere. He claims Harris's delusions are religiously significant. If I have to make a complaint, I will. I'm not losing my patient over unitology bullshit. Not again. Tracking rig signal. Dr. Nicole Brennan. Rig location? Inconclusive. Manual rig tracking is available. This was another place where we could have gotten more uh, rods. Dr. Charles Mercer. I convinced Jurgens to show me the video feed from the colony. It's remarkable. Finally see what I've sought all my life. The miners, this transformation, the divide death itself. Kain is erring on the side of caution. His faith has been shaken by these necromorphs, as he calls them. How strange. When my own faith has been so richly rewarded. To live without Kain, I must study one of these creatures. Or the next best thing. Brennan's patient, for example. You can find the uh, translation for the weird necromorph writing, or the cipher for this weird necromorph writing on the wall over here. Ben, what in God's name is happening down there? Precisely that. God's work. You say that these deaths at the colony the paranoia the hallucinations you wanted a scientific analysis cause and effect well it all began after they raised the marker what are you so worried about the marker is divine we know this look it'll be on board tomorrow you can study it then Put your mind at ease. At ease? People are dying. How can that be the transformation the teachings promise? We're witnessing a new beginning. Terrence, for unitology, for humanity. Of course our faith is being tested. Everything is about to change. That's what worries me. And recording. Seal entry.
One thing that I actually like and appreciate about Dead Space Remake is how a lot of the rooms and the hallways are actually a little less cramped. With Plasma Cutter upgrades early on, you can get rid of the uh, tentacles on the lurkers. Yeah, in this room, apparently they... Uh they grow clones of the crew members in order to reattach their limbs. These guys are pretty simple, just stay away from them. But uh, occasionally one might try to rush you with its tentacles out. And if that happens, just uh, run in a circle until it stops. But if you get rid of two tentacles, then they will die. Answering her wriggling. What's your status? I found a shock pad I can use on the barricade. I'm heading back there now. Watch the voltage on that pad. I'm not losing anyone else. So in the interest of saving ammo, I used stasis on both of these guys, and I ran back. Because there were two enemies. I figured going back into the... Uh, the grow chamber here would be the best thing so that I could grab these rods and impale them. But uh, one of them chased me through the vent into this room. And the other one, I'm pretty sure, just uh, killed itself on the door. Because necromorphs are pretty dumb. Also, be very careful when going through doors, because sometimes a door will close early. And that will cause damage to you. I did run out of stasis, so I had to go back and uh, get my stasis back so that I could get back through this door. Because this was the only way out.
running back this way so that I could use the bench in this other room. So I should probably mention here the uh, aggressor AI. It's probably going to start to become a thing. Level 2 security clearance required. pretty sure this guy is a scripted encounter. One thing that you'll probably notice is that the um, the plasma cutter actually does end up uh, passing through limbs sometimes. So the hit detection on the plasma cutter is a little messy. From here I decided to upgrade my stasis. Energy capacity and duration. We don't need the size upgrade yet. So the aggressor AI. Uh, whenever you backtrack through an area, depending on how well you are performing, the game may decide to throw a few extra enemies your way. There will also be jump scares, there will also be things like lights will shut off, stuff like that. On the way into the clinic, scripted jump scare. Find Captain Mathias's body. Get his rig codes, and the computer's all ours. Loop and transmit to all personnel. This is Senior Medical Officer Nicole Brennan. Medical is overwhelmed. We need help. Look at his wounds. We can't handle so many trauma cases, and the command crew won't tell us what's happening. God, he's seizing. Shit. <clears throat> Maybe I have some KHP left. PHB or phenobarbital. Medical log, Dr. Nicole Brennan. So much for being paranoid. I repurposed this room to run counseling sessions without unitologists interfering. Now it's the only place I need to I recovered a limb after your attack. Security clearance required. Genetically, it's human tissue with level two bizarre. security clearance required. But it's just a sample. It's not enough to figure out a cure. I need. Wait, where's that report from engineering? Here. The engineers pulled something out of machinery. Limbs missing, torso intact. Okay. Time for a real autopsy. Once we pull the battery out here, enemies will spawn in. One at a time, fortunately. In the original game, the way that the uh, enemies would spawn in in like every encounter, they would usually be like, I don't know, 10 necromorphs or something you'd have to fight. And then it would delay, after killing the last necromorph, it would delay for like, you know, 5-10 seconds and then spawn in like one or two more. And that was just like a very common gimmick that was used ad infinitum, ad nauseum. Suffice it to say, I am glad that they do not do that in the remake of this game. Once 
Once we pop down over here, this Lurker is scripted to run away from us. If we shoot him, he'll turn around. If that uh, tool tray there didn't get in the way, then I would have just kept using the uh, plasma cutter on that guy. But there's a stasis recharge right here anyway. One question that I got in chat is, how did they balance the encounters in the original game? And the answer is, they didn't. At all. He left me. I woke in the dark with them scratching in the walls. Playing those files kind of got messed up, so. You left me. I woke in the dark with them scratching in the walls. Scratching like rats. And you will lock me in with them. Fuckers. I'll cut them out. I'll cut them out. I'll cut them out. <coughs> Mercer, it's Terence Kine. You were in surgery, so I left this with Warwick. He'll be discreet. I just got the latest report from Aegis 7. The situation's worse than Captain Matthias will admit. 40% of the colony's population is now showing symptoms. Depression, hallucinations, more violence. People are dying down there. I know it's linked to the marker somehow, but I just don't have enough data. Mercer, maybe I was wrong. We need answers, by any means possible. That patient, Brent Harris, might be our last hope. One lurker spawns in in this room. Once we enter this door, we're forced into a fight. This is our first encounter with an enhanced Necromorph. We're going to start by stunning this guy because we have another priority. 
and it's not him. It's this guy. So this is an Infector. Infectors take bodies, and they will make more Necromorphs. They are priority one in every fight. Kill them first. Isaac, what's your status? Do you have the captain's rig? Fuck me! Transmitting codes now. I saw it, Hammond. A flying one turned the captain's body into a, another one of those things. The same must have happened to Chen. God! Maybe yeah. the command computer has something. Uh, where's Daniel's computer? Head back to the security checkpoint. It's safer there. At least I can upgrade your clearance. It should be noted that in the remake of Dead Space 1, you can dismember the infectors. I think after you blow off like one of their wings, they can no longer infect other enemies. Isaac. I'm here. What the hell's happening? The computer says the Ishimura's engines are offline. We're on a decaying orbit toward each of seven. Oh god. I have to get to engineering. There's no time. That tram station's offline. Unless... Here. Head back to the flight deck. I'll guide you from there. If this damage report's right, there's a shortcut to engineering. Selling all of my extra med kits and whatnot so that I can buy another power node. because I really wanted that cartridge pack for the plasma cutter. More ammo capacity overall. Gotta reload less. It's a uh, pretty win-win.
Isaac, this damage report says there's a broken cargo lift just beyond the hangar doors. I'll open them now. Entering zero gravity. You'll need your thrusters to reach it. If that lift shaft should take you straight down to engineering. Floating around here first to loot some of these boxes over here. Read the first letter of every line. It says Peng Cargo. Basically, this tells you you can get Peng in the cargo area in Chapter 11.
Exiting zero gravity. Exiting vacuum. Clearance confirmed. Engineering log, acting chief engineer Jacob Temple reporting. Christ, I still can't believe the chief is gone. It's, it's all fallen apart since the captain died. Everyone down here is on their last nerve. We thought the rioting was the worst of it. Until those things came through the vents. Their faces. Fuck, those were my lunch buddies, Liz's friends, old boyfriends. And out of nowhere, the engines are screwed. Primaries laboring, we're hemorrhaging fuel. Fuck if I know why. I'm taking Danvers to the fuel depot to fix it. Gotta keep the team focused or we'll crack. Temple out. Seeing you in the control room. Any news on the engines? Yeah, but it makes no sense. They're out of fuel. The centrifuge is offline. We're tethered to a four trillion ton payload. Without the engines, it's dragging us down to the planet. Can you handle it alone? Sure. Fix the centrifuge, get the fuel running, then do a full restart. But you'll need to stabilize our orbit from there. Standing by. Fast as you can, Isaac. <laughs> The Ripper is the second weapon that you get. Well, third weapon, actually. The Plasma Cutter is a gimme. The Ripper is kind of whatever. We need help down in engineering! Denver's got those wires up! Tell us to cut out! I don't want them! Also, if you go too far away from a security box, like a security message, then the message will just like automatically turn off. But the first thing that I do here is I just put the Ripper away. Reason being, if I keep the Ripper on me, then it will start spawning ammo for the Ripper.
Another Necromorph body right there. I think sometimes that one might get up. The second part of the, uh, sorry, the third part of the uh, Nicole side quest is beyond that door right there. Yeah, that's another thing too, there's side quests in this game. Dr. Nicole Brennan. Rig identifies the subject was junior engineer David Swenson. The subject was dismembered after falling into machinery, allowing. God. So sorry. Contains a yellow vial seen in other specimens. I've seen this vial react to dead or bioprosthetic cells. The dead tissue is absorbed, recombined, then reanimated. The vial shares genetic markers with human DNA and a growth on the walls. It's all connected to the marker from page 7. How? Dr. Kine has vanished. And this is with the survivors on the mining deck. You'll rest easy now, David. I promise. End log. Even though I don't uh, use the Ripper, I still buy the upgrades for it. Because doing so will give me an extra... an extra power node. Which is redeemable at the bench. But in this case, I went ahead and got the uh, Plasma Cutter upgrade and upgraded the damage. Another very welcome change to the weapon upgrade system. Is that no node is useless. So there's no more empty node spaces.
I like to drop that barrel right there. And then run away. So that I can blow it up. And then before we uh, go across the gondola. Gonna get this loot over here and... Fuel the north engine. Additional fuel required for engine restart. As that is an enhanced necromorph right there, throwing an explosive barrel will not kill it in one shot. Strat of dropping that explosive barrel to try to run away didn't work out, so I had no choice but to kill him the old fashioned way there. Pretty sure those thick rods over there that are on the walls can actually destroy necromorphs in one shot. As well. But I think I didn't realize that until later, because I thought they just served as like blunt objects. Maybe I used them incorrectly, but I will definitely reinvestigate that for the uh, impossible mode run through that I have planned. So two enemies are going to be on that side right there. We just got to blow up the barrel to get rid of them. We also encounter a new type of necromorph here, the spitter. So spitters are pretty obnoxious as well, for obvious reasons. I mean, they have a ranged attack. It's got a bit of a slow windup, but obviously it's really bad if you're in a cramped space. Progress report filed by Jacob Temple. The engine problems aren't a malfunction. Someone shut off the fuel lines to the primary engine and damaged the valves to hell and back. We just wasted an hour fixing them. Now we need to restart the south refueling station, but some jackass turned off the power and locked up the circuit breaker. No engines? We're gonna hit planet fall soon. What now? There's gotta be someone around here how to spare access card. Go see. Wait, you hear that? Stafford, go! So the thing about Impalement is that it actually does not uh, kill a Necromorph in one shot. Isaac. Damn it. Daniels? Claw Impalement, sorry. I'm glad to disappoint. I barricaded myself in the computer core. I can hear them, but I don't think they know I'm here. Isaac, I've tracked down your rig. You're an engineer, right? I'll get myself admin privileges. Maybe I can help. I'm about you. I usually like to get rid of the oxygen here. It makes it so you can't really hear the enemies. But it's alright. We're not going to be fighting very many enemies. So with Impalement, uh, getting rid of a Necromorph's arm does half its HP. So you can kill it the rest of the way. I've got a fuel reading. Only a quarter full, but it should be enough. I still need to get the centrifuge working before a restart. Someone really screwed with these fuel lines. Move fast, Isaac. Aegis 7's looking damn close out there. <laughs> Also, it should be noted that with the Spitter's projectiles, while you can grab it and chuck it back at them in Dead Space 2 Remake, you cannot do that in Dead Space 1 Remake. Sorry, Dead Space 2 Remake? 
Oh, damn, I violated NDA. I'm kidding, there actually is no Dead Space 2 remake. The difference between Dead Space 2 and Dead Space 1 remake, as far as the spitters is concerned, is that you cannot grab their projectile and chuck it back at them. Also, always make sure to, uh... Always make sure to refill your oxygen before going across the gondola. I have no idea what that noise is. It's probably something they put there to freak you out. Could be a hallucination of some kind. <sighs> Surprise Leaper around the corner. He's a bit hard to see. The pulse rifle on its own is actually not very good for, um... It's not very good for dismembering enemies. It's good for poking things. It's good for, uh, destroying, uh... Large, uh, infectious cores. And it's also very good for dealing with, uh... The uh, tweakers that you'll encounter later. So the pulse rifle is worth getting. But uh, in most situations, it's not that great. Try not to use stasis on this guy. Because we uh, dismembered the body during that, uh, during that call earlier, the body that was sitting in the chair, the infector will not go after the body. I would say right about now is when the infect or is when the uh, aggressor AI will start to kick in in full force, especially if you are trying to go for a stasis refill. Once we press this button, enemies will flood the room. Well, there's actually like four enemies here that we have to fight. The main reason why I wanted to save my stasis modules, actually. Starting with a lurker right here.
That one insisted on chasing a little bit. After these first two leapers. The next enemy that pops out. Standard Necromorph. Then a Leaper. And that's it. Decontamination sequence complete. Thank you for your patience. Gonna head left next because there is a power module this way. Power node, sorry. And upon grabbing this power node, a couple of lurkers will spawn in. stasis in order to solve this puzzle. There's a couple of leapers in here. Gotta be very careful because they can generally uh, leap at you faster than you can move out of the way while you're floating in the air. I've been hit by that more times than I would care to admit. Case in point, but that one just glided right behind me. Trying to be conservative with my ammo, though, so... Even the standard Leaper... ...doesn't seem to die from a direct hit with a uh, gas canister. Before we throw the switch... Restart. Before we throw the switch, definitely want to refill stasis. Also a little trick to know if you've taken damage or not. If you try to use a healing item, and the game doesn't let you use a healing item, it means that you're at 100% health. So I do that quite a lot, just to absolutely con confirm that I haven't taken damage from something. I'm trying to make sure that I've looted every piece of... Every piece of loot here. Then we throw the switch. Centrifuge activated. Re-establishing 
balance with tectonic load. But yeah, really, really dumb things can actually damage you in this game, like uh, doors. Put the centrifuges back online. All that's left is restarting the engines, right? Ready when you are. Stasis canisters can damage you, and also fire extinguishers. Fire extinguishers are uh, pretty awful. Just use stasis on that guy. Let the centrifuge take care of him. I gotta wait for the centrifuge to make its way back around. And for some reason I got caught on an invisible wall there. So this encounter with this tentacle over here, this is actually a very good uh, place for the pulse rifle. I ran out of ammo there, and reloading would have taken longer than switching to the plasma pistol to finish it off. I missed a lot of shots. Also, using the alt fire doesn't really help with the tentacle. Also, you can respec by spending 5,000 credits. So if you decide you don't like one gun and want to respec to another gun, you can do that. Bit of uh, past car C routing over here. Shouldn't even bother buying the upgrades unless you are right next to a bench at the shop. It would have actually been a lot faster to use the bench in the room to the left of the shop as opposed to going back up this elevator.
entering zero gravity. Hey, Hammond. I cracked the secure files. DC was here for more than just a mining claim, huh? What do you mean? This outbreak started on the colony after the miners dug up some artifacts. That's impossible. That's impossible. But it would explain why Aegis 7 is meant to be off limits, right? Earth stuff orders. When the miners found the artifact, they reported hallucinations, paranoia, suicides. But the Ishimura brought this marker on board anyway. Like that was a plan. Wait. The marker. Okay, back up. Where's this marker now? In cargo. All package set for delivery. Exiting zero gravity. Flamethrower alt fire is very good for destroying wall guardians. And flamethrower primary fire is good for getting rid of enemies I like to call boogers. Beyond getting rid of uh, boogers and wall guardians, I haven't really found too much use for the flamethrower. My last log. Temple reporting. I can't raise anyone on Ricklink. I think my team is gone. I found the Kinesis module with someone who used to bust the centrifuge. Burned out. Who would sabotage the Ishimura at a time like this? I'll report to the bridge. If anyone's left. And then I'm finding Elizabeth and getting us the hell off this ship. So as far as I'm concerned, the flamethrower is mostly good for uh, just selling its ammo. I pick up this fire hydrant over here because the explosion from the fire hydrant actually does uh, do one damage and all of these guys all have one damage each. These little boogers, so that's why I chucked a fire hydrant in there. After the audio log coming up there's going to be another jump scare. Sorry not audio log, just that person dying. That's also our first encounter with the uh, pregnant necromorphs. Oh yeah, that's another thing is you can just throw basically anything at these uh, at these cores and they'll blow up. Case in point.
Once we go in here, there's also a stasis recharge. Also, watch out for these, uh... Watch out for these dudes in the walls right here. They're not wall guardians. But, uh, they can still damage you. I like to call them... I like to call them flashers. Because they, uh... They, like, raise their skin up. Like a sex pervert wearing a trench coat flashing his junk at you. A very eclectic name, I know. Warning. Planet fall imminent. Correct course immediately. This room over here can be uh, quite bothersome. Pregnant necromorphs, by the way, try not to shoot them in the stomach. Because if you do, then either a lurker or a bunch of boogers will spawn out of the pregnant necromorphs. So the best course of action against the pregnants is to dismember their arms. Our cell to begin ignition sequence. Easier to target their arms if you get rid of their legs. But yeah, this includes uh, throwing barrels at them. Don't throw barrels at them. Warning. Engine power failure. Ignition sequence initiated. Please stand by. From this point, we can start throwing barrels at them. Oh, especially at that guy. Spitters absolutely need to dispose of those as quickly as possible. Fuel I would almost go as far as to say you should absolutely use the alt fire from the pulse rifle. Leapers are absolutely the fastest enemy that you will encounter, though. Engines ready. Please confirm ignition order. So I like to prioritize leapers and spitters. Isaac, you did it. 
Ishimura is moving again. No thanks to whoever sabotaged the fuck out of these engines. You bought us time to figure it out. Autopilot's taking us into geostationary orbit. Wait, wait, you're flying us through the planet crack debris? That's what the asteroid defense system is for. But the ADS is offline. I've got the system readouts here. Hammond, the Ishimura's in rough shape. A couple of bad strikes I can finish her off. Shit. Daniels, give me all the data you have. I'll try to adjust course. Isaac, take the train from engineering. Meet me on the bridge. I'll leave the station locked down. We need to work on this together. Before proceeding to the next area, Entering zero gravity. a quick stasis recharge was in order. I was also double checking to make sure that there wasn't anything left. Exiting zero gravity. at the ADS cannons. They're a mess. I'm gonna need your help. I am not losing the Ishimura. Not now. Ishimura hammer? What marker? That artifact they found? Don't bullshit us. CEC knew all along about the marker, didn't they? Isn't that why you're really here? Corporate wouldn't send the Ishimura for some off the <gasps> mining. But alien technology, yeah, that fits. And how does losing my team fit into this theory? Hey, knock this shit off. We're into the debris field. We get the ADS back together. It's over. Then meet me at the captain's nest. Daniels? Fine. But I'm going through the ship reports, Hammond. I'm getting some answers. So that right there actually does not cause any damage to you. I completely forgot about that jump scare, but it doesn't actually damage you. Okay. Level 
At least we came in a life supporter movie. So far. Security request retrieved. Security, come in! We've been boarded! I repeat, the ship has been boarded! We are under attack! They killed most of the deck staff. Where the hell is Chief Vincent? We need security backup now! Guns are useless. We... What in God's name is that? I'm not seeing things, right? That's Chen. You can't help him, Hammett. He's... You're right. I should... The hell with it. Pod 47 launched. I worked with him for years. Johnston, too. At least she was spared becoming a monster. We're gonna fix this, Hammond? For them? Yeah. Come on. The ADS cannons. I can hold this position for a while, if no more asteroids come through the roof. Tell us the ADS power routing is shot. Well, the administration systems aren't doing much. We could redirect power from there. I'd need to rewire the junction boxes, but we get the ADS cannons back. Good. Isaac, about what Daniel said. I don't know about any illegal mining or the market. I swear, I'm just here for a repair mission. Look, Hammond. I don't know you or Daniels well enough to judge, but CEC had to know about the marker. The company, maybe. But shit like that's above my pay grade. Look, we can get into it later. You'll need a way down to those junction boxes. You can turn the atrium elevators back on from security. You'll have full access. I found a CEC executive keycard. I'll upgrade your clearance. And you upgraded yours already? Yeah, just in case. Isaac, I heard something up there. Something big. Watch your back. I do really like how all the areas of this game are completely interconnected. Like in Resident Evil 2 Remake. And that uh, the tram is basically just a uh, fast travel. So you could probably finish this game using the, tra using the tram like, I don't know, two times maybe? So here's our uh, first encounter with a Brute. For Brutes, uh, we use a couple of stasis modules to get behind them. And I like to use the uh, Pulse Rifle to dismember both of his arms. He can turn around really fast if you don't use stasis. You pretty much have to use stasis against him. 
Brutes always drop power nodes. Clearance confirmed. Atrium elevators are now online. in crisis, you've cut us off. By Maritime Law Article 5469, I, Dr. Terrence Kine, hereby declare Captain Benjamin Matthias unfit for duty. Heretic! Hold him. Ben, you're, you're not yourself. Let me help you. Traitor, get your shields off me! This is my ship! Oh my god, he's... You... Ben... You saw I was trying to help him. Doctor, you you just killed the captain. We have to take you in. I can't. If the others from the church get a hold of me. Stop! God knows where that explosion comes from. Anyhow. I'll head into this room and uh, grab this node and whatever loot's in here as well. Isaac, I'm reading electrical hazards on the floor ahead of you. 60-year-old dead plane doesn't play well with power surges. Watch your step. <laughs> And here's where we get the contact beam. The contact beam is super, super good against bosses and brutes. For these enhanced necromorphs, you uh, have to take out both of their arms in order to fully kill them. And because that can be a bit painful sometimes, by all means, go ahead and take out a leg first. Now, because the bronze semiconductor is always going to be worth more than a small med kit, always got rid of the small med kit first. Head to the right here next. We'll loot these lockers over here now that we have the contact gun in our inventory. This means that uh, more of these chests and lockers are actually going to be spawning contact beam ammo. As soon as we get out of here, there's going to be a couple of lurkers. Sometimes if you're lucky, a lurker will run into the uh, electric paneling and get electrocuted. But as you go deeper into the room, there's going to be more exposed electrical panels. So best thing to do is to just uh, go back and uh, try to take them out one at a time.
more room to dodge projectiles if you don't take them out fast enough. Past Carsey forgot whether or not there was loot on top of that platform there. So we're going to power up the ADS cannons and we are just going to leave. A couple of uh, a couple of infectors will spawn in here. As long as you leave immediately, you won't have to deal with them. Next, going to return back to the first floor to sell some of this extra loot. Upon leaving the elevator, there will be a couple of uh, a couple of leapers here. I do believe that this is a scripted encounter because I've gotten these guys just about every time. We also have our uh, level 2 clearance so we can start opening level 2 boxes. Contact beam ammo also sells for a lot. I always try to budget uh, maybe around 60 contact beam ammo for the final boss. There's about to be a stasis recharge station, so we don't need a horrendous amount of stasis banked up. Elevators are also a very good time to trade out your weapons while you wait. So it is the same. That marker. That's the symbol of the Church of Unitology. It didn't take you for a believer, Isaac. My mother was. But if they found this on some alien planet, what does that mean? That Unitology's onto something? Unitology's full of shit. Forget it. There's a uh, combination of punches and kicks you can do in this room in order to get some... Uh, free power nodes as well. I actually don't know the details of it, but I will more than likely include that information in my New Game Plus walkthrough.
I will be doing a New Game Plus video, just specifically because there is content to cover in New Game Plus that cannot be found in New Game. So it's going to be one of the uh, one of the rare occasions where you actually do see me play New Game Plus. We have to break that fuse from the back in order to be able to access this room. Get the pulse rifle upgrade. We'll be returning here later once we have the level 3 uh, clearance. But otherwise we can come back here, get a stasis recharge. So that first Lurker gets electrocuted. Basically, it's just showing you that you have to time your uh, you have to time your moves. The thing that I like to do here most is just use stasis whenever they get on a panel. Kills them pretty quick. There's one more lurker around the corner here. Upon walking past a certain line, the enemies will pop out of a panel in the floor. Sorry, on the ceiling. Same as before, they only have one path to come through because they came from exactly where you came from. With stasis, they are barely capable of walking out of the electrified floor. So in order to guarantee that they get electrocuted, it might be best to just hit them with the stasis a little early. If nothing else, you can shoot them from the other side. Circuit board right there too. Of course, these guys are just dumber than a box of rocks. Stasis recharge right here and getting our contact beam ready because we're about to fight a brute. So same as before. We're going to use stasis. And then we're going to go behind and use the alt fire. So the alt fire is a charge beam. Uh, if you get too close, then there will be some AoE damage that will affect you. So you can't shoot it at point blank like you could in the other games. Reroute from the electrical system. Just watch the outlets. The grid's unstable. That's two. One more system and we'll have power for the ADS. Once we shut off the power, none of the floors will be electrified anymore. We can also go this way and uh, break a couple more boxes. More often than not, when there's no ammo drops, it's, al it's always going to be like 100 credits, 400 credits. In my opinion, still worth getting, though. I cracked the Ishimura's Medsai reports. They're a fucking horror show. These things mold any dead tissue into a new form. One kind infects corpses, and the rest... Make more corpses to infect. That organic shit on the walls. That's dead tissue, too. The crew thought it was a... Habitat changer. Isaac, I'm gonna run some diagnostics. I think that stuff's spreading. The 
before going to the elevator on the other side of the central column. Once again, clear out the inventory. I would say in general you probably need no more than five packs of pulse rifle. Each pulse rifle alt fire consumes 25 ammo, something like that. But definitely the greatest strength of the pulse rifle is in its mag capacity. So in order to take full advantage of the alt fire, you definitely want to have all of your ammo capacity as soon as possible. There's nothing left to be done in that elevator, so we're going to go to the other side and head directly to the ADS cannon. Take note of that one. It's Jacob. I came to the bridge looking for you, but it is completely fucked. I'm not sticking around in case whatever did it comes back, and neither should you. It looks like the admin staff went to the mining deck to meet up with the other survivors. I'll head there too. If you aren't with them, I'll find a way to contact you. Behind this pregnant is another enhanced necromorph. Back online. We wait. Auto targeting offline. Calibration data not found. Fuck. No auto targeting. The cannons are useless. What about manual targeting? You want to go out there with all that shit raining down and target the ADS cannons manually? If I give the cannons enough targeting data, it'll recalibrate the system. You got a better idea? Christ. I'll open exterior access. I hope you know what you're doing. Man, Isaac is such a go-getter. For some reason, the aggressor AI decided to shut off the lights after loading the save. We'll loot that other room after we're done with the ADS cannons. Thank you, Poos. What's the plan? I'll seek a few of the ADS cannons to one of my tools. I target an asteroid, the cannons take it out, and I recalibrate the system. We're out of options. Do it. Entering zero gravity. Sinking targeting system. So as long as you stay high, you shouldn't have to worry about any of the asteroids hitting you with any AoE damage. Calibration complete. Cannon auto-targeting online. If you nail five direct hits, then each cannon will be fully calibrated. So just stay high. And uh, after the second cannon is calibrated is when we have to watch out for enemies. There will be lurkers. Targeting system. In the original game in this trench, integrity. it was always leapers. But it's just uh, lurkers this time. Calibration complete. Cannon 
auto-targeting online. So at this point, just uh, trying to keep my oxygen up and looking for standard enemies. There they are. They popped out. Also, one of the uh, one of the rigs for the uh, master security side quest is out here. So make sure you get it before you leave. I had to get it later because I actually didn't know it was out here at the time of this recording. So I will be coming back to get it later. But it's a little bit further out after the third panel, and it is colored purple. Once again, stay high. Yeah, it's right there on screen, actually. You can see it. Targeting system. It was colored purple. I completely ignored it. Data migration complete. Because Pascarsi is dumb. Recalibrated. Auto targeting systems enabled. They're back. The ADS cannons are online ship wide. Thank God. Engaging autopilot. Get yourself inside, Isaac. I think I've figured out our next move. Exiting zero gravity. Exiting vacuum. Security request retrieved. Officer Sheik, I need security here right now. No one's coming. White, for Christ's sake, step away from the controls. We need our first officer. Captain Matthias is dead. The captain's dead? Vincent's security team is dead? Who's left? Step away from the airlock. That's an order. Who's left, Sheik? A crew full of uni fanatics? Eckhart screwed us good, didn't he? If a CEC director could go that bad, maybe the whole company's rotten to the core. Just like Aegis 7. You think CEC won't send a rescue team for their precious planet cracker? Think white. We just need to hold on. Yes. You probably should. No, sir! Oh, Lord! You goddamn fool! Felix! Do the airlock now! Isaac. Hammond, I just intercepted a transmission for medical. Someone's down there? See what you make of this. This is Senior Medical Officer Nicole Brennan. Medical is his sanctuary. All survivors, please join us. Nicole, I'm going back to medical. Makes sense. I'll head to the crew deck and look for survivors from the bridge. I'll be in touch. The crew deck. Wonder if he knows something we don't. So when this is done, we have uh, divider parts to worry about. Pulse rifle is pretty good for this, but uh, you could also use the. Uh, the necromorph claws from the two necromorphs that we killed earlier and just chuck those at the divider parts because those will kill the divider parts in one hit
locked behind me. Hello? Another survivor. At last. You'll be safe here. I'm a doctor. Is Nicole Brennan with you? You're not here for sanctuary then. Well, Dr. Brennan's currently engaged. Shall I send you to her? How about you unlock these doors and I'll find her myself? Are you that selfish? You might let something in. Or out. Shit. So, you've decided to be difficult. Take a seat. I'll deal with you momentarily. Upon going down this hallway, we're going to be accosted by a couple of a uh, couple of lurkers. You just take out their tentacles real quick. Now that we've entered crazy unitologist medical, things are a bit different. What is this? Research, of course. Using alt fire for the flamethrower will actually destroy the uh, wall guardians here. As long as you fire the grenade in exactly the right spot, it'll take out all the tentacles. Alternatively, you can also use a couple of shots from uh, alt fire on the pulse rifle. There's three tentacle cores that we have to destroy in this room in order to be able to progress. After we destroy that tentacle core, a leaper will come out. We can just... Uh Stasis and stomp.
After destroying both of the tentacle cores, another Leaper will spawn and we'll do the same thing. Just stomp the shitty cartoon stake out of him. Heading into the chemical lab, make sure you grab that ex extra node in the cabinet. Medical is Shipwise transmission override. Isaac Clark. Just a trick. Isaac. Isaac. Make us one. Dr. Brennan's nearest and dearest. We were colleagues, you know. Dr. Chalice Mercer. Are you the reason the marker won't begin? That's it. Convergence is installed. She's meddling. How is the question? But even if I was to ask, I suspect you're not the talkative type. And I haven't fully explored the cause of death as that missing factor. Dismemberment. I think you're on the right track there. <laughs> Try and relax, Mr. Clark. Convergence is so close. Maybe your death will tip the balance. As soon as we regain control, just uh, hit that stasis and we just lure him around in a circle. Dodging this guy isn't tough. Just uh, just stay strafing to the right and stay moving in a circle around the room like this and wait for Kendra to open the door. Give it about an extra second, then use stasis and leave the door. If you exit quickly enough, then he shouldn't follow you. Except the door didn't close fast enough. So instead what we're going to do is uh, 
We're going to run all the way back to this elevator and, I guess, shoot all the little boogers. So here's the thing. If you get grabbed by a booger, it doesn't actually cause damage to you for a minute. So you actually can just shake off... You, get, you actually can just shake off the booger without it actually causing any damage. The next time I get a uh, small med kit, I will demonstrate it. I think what I did here was I actually just bought a small med kit. I hit Nicole's broadcast. It was a trick by a fucking unitologist. Dr. Mercer. He's locked down medical to experiment on the crew. Oh, God. Every way out is locked down through one of the offices. Must be Mercer's. I can brute force the internal doors, but you will have to reach his office and lift the lockdown manually. For the most part, I did hold on to a singular uh, small med pack for the express purpose of being able to demonstrate that I didn't take damage. But yeah, once again, if you try to use a med kit and the game doesn't let you use a med kit, it means that you are still at 100% health. So I didn't take any damage from that booger. That I threw off of me. While it is important to upgrade the contact beam for later because it will result in requiring fewer shots to kill bosses. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, upgrading the contact beam means that it will take fewer shots to kill bosses. So we'll be doing that later. So in this room we have to play very aggressively because we're dealing with a lot of different enemies on top of dealing with the uh, with the regenerator here or the hunter as it is called. It's best to just go ahead and take care of the enemies in this room. Because if we do not, then they will actually be able to follow us through the vents. I could have used that fan blade to actually, like, dismember something. Oh, 
directly to our right. The line gun is in that level 2 room. I'll get that later. I saw your hunter. I know who it used to be. That cellular regeneration? Good God, don't you see what you've done? I agree with Amelia. If this is unitology, I want no part of it. My diagnosis. Poor Terence is suffering from the same dementia reported on the Aegis 7 colony. Amelia, for example. The only Amelia he's ever mentioned was his wife. And Amelia Kine. Seven years ago. Surgical log, Dr. Charles Mercer, tissue regeneration experiment five. Please, please not. The children of the marker, kind necromorphs, have provided all the material I could ask. And the infector variant has provided a key insight. Implanting the material directly into the brain renders optimal results. Of course, that requires puncturing the frontal bone just above the glabella. Please, no! Don't worry. It's been sterilized. Warning. Local door protocols corrupted. Rebooting system. Please stand by. Who's there? Oh, God. Hold on. I can help you. Not me. Save hydroponics. We're all dying. Air's poison. But there's still time. Her end time will work if... <coughs> she just needs liquid nitrogen. Save us! <laughs> Quality is dropping shipwide. Something's poisoning the oxygen and hydroponics. If we lose our air supply, you said we could fix it. He came looking for liquid nitrogen. And there has to be some in the cryogenic slab. Okay, not like we have a better option. I'll clear you a path to cryo. Door protocols rebooted. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> Hazard detected. Shameful, Mr. Clark. Only the liquid infection. Who's that? Who's that? There's gotta be. Here! There's emergency back controls at the security test point. Go! I'll try to lock them out! After killing that pregnant, we can go back get stasis recharge now you see what the uh, oxygen recharge there is for as you can see there he is again so we're just going to throw a stasis at him it will affect the door there though too As long as the door is closed, the uh, regenerator cannot come after us. Otherwise, it's a pretty short trek back to security. Okay, it's clearing. We're to pump that gas in from hydroponics. The air's already that bad. I'm gonna need a faster way to crowd, Jennings. I'll open the other door from the chemical lab. It'll take you straight there.
Sold all the extra goodies. Now we got our next level suit. Now that we've overrode everything else, we can go back through to uh, Mercer's lab. We will be accosted by a pregnant on our way over. There's also a lurker right there in front of us. We can't just huddle up down here because an enemy can actually shoot us from above that little, uh, that little uh, control room right there. I'm just waiting for this uh, lurker to stop and like raise his tentacles. Another level 3 door and some level 3 lockers here. Take note of those for later. Level 3 security clearance required. So once the hunter pops up here, we're just going to wait for him to come into the room here and then just hit him with stasis and go. Except he escaped because he decided to, uh, he decided he was going to move fast that time. While we're running around trying to dodge these lurkers here. Man, that was risky. That was hella risky. It's very rare that, uh... It's very rare that the, uh, hunter decides to, uh... Just be moving at full speed in the middle of stasis like that. Like, exactly like that. It's like, if you hit him with stasis... When he's moving at full speed like that... Then his movement speed is just... Way too fast for you to be able to shut the door on him. It's actually best to just cut off his legs just to be sure. Bastard locked me out again. Isaac, you okay? Uh, 
Ah, stop that hunter. The Mercer's gone. He wants to take these things to Earth, Kendra. You have to seal the captain's nest and warn Hammond. Okay, I can seal the nest, but I haven't been able to reach Hammond since he went to the crew deck. Isaac, our air quality is falling fast. If you've got liquid nitrogen, we gotta fix hydroponics. Want it. Keep trying to reach Hammond. Mercer, I don't think he's done yet. Got something, Isaac? It's, uh, let's call it a tissue sample from Mercer's pet hunter. Careful. Who knows what mad science went into that thing? Maybe I could find out. Figure out what Mercer's up to. If I'm fast, there has to be a DNA scanner close by. Isaac, the hydroponics tram station is sealed off. You'll need another way there. Take the tram back towards the hangar, then head to the repair station. Remember where you took that broken tram car off the tracks? There's an access door in there that'll take you to hydroponics. That tissue sample is part of a side quest called Premeditated Malpractice that we will go check out later. Basically, we take it to the research wing and use a uh, DNA scanner there. And this door takes us back to the bridge. This is just door that leads us to the bridge. But past Carsey was a complete dummy and forgot that that's exactly what this door was. It's just back to the bridge where we were just a little while ago. So upon returning to uh, the hangar, you can see that I sell all of my flamethrower ammo because each uh, each flamethrower pickup of uh, 25 fuel gives us around uh, 875, 875 credits. So a full stack of flamethrower ammo will give us like 5,000 credits. It's actually very good to keep the flamethrower for the express purpose of selling to make more money. Because the flamethrower itself, I find, has uh, pretty limited uses. Mostly for taking out swarmers and taking out wall guardians. So you guys remember this room. It's quite simple. Just, uh... Use stasis and stomp the crap out stomp the crap out of these dudes. Stomp the crap out of these dudes. Isaac, if you're near hydroponics, check your helmet filters. That air's not safe to breathe. Yeah, I smell it. The whole deck's rotting. I'm reading a huge mass in food storage. Too big to be anything they grew. It looks like the source of the poison gas. That patient in medical. He said something about creating an enzyme, right? Maybe the scientists left the workstation open. Hydroponics log, Dr. Elizabeth Crawford. 
Now the sprinklers are fixed, accessible. we're working close to Thank maximum capacity. All flora is thriving, and food yield has created a surplus. And I had the surplus packed up so we could send it to the colony. The Captain Matthias is strictly enforcing his no-fly order. It's ridiculous. I'm lodging a complaint. Everyone knows Aegis 7 needs help. What harm could some fresh fruit do? <laughs> If you're hearing this, you know I have to try. Warning. Liquid nitrogen supply depleted. Liquid nitrogen replenished. Beginning enzyme synthesis. Enzyme synthesis complete. Caution, do not ingest. Any luck? Yeah, I finished the enzyme. It's been modified to digest something big. They must have been trying to kill whatever's in food storage. Let's hope it works. I'm here. Oh my god. How? Listen, we need to inject it into the Leviathan. You can't get into food storage, but there's another way. It's risky. Riskier than running out of air? My team has been altered. They're all connected to the Leviathan, breathing out its toxins. That connection goes both ways. Okay. So if I get to your team and inject them... The enzyme will be carried right into the Leviathan's heart. Bind the... Weezers. And they're suffering. And when the Leviathan is weak enough, we bent the bastard into space. Dodging in between these uh, these irrigation sprays or whatever. I don't even know what the hell those things are. All you need to know is that they cause damage to you. And right about now is a very good time to start upgrading. The contact beam.
Once we get to the top of this elevator, there's one enemy over here. We can just shoot off its arm, throw its claw back at it, and kill it. Because there's no stasis, that is the uh, second best thing to do. Go ahead and throw a uh, barrel over there so that we get claws and then we can kill the uh, lurkers in one shot. And we'll use the rods. We'll use the rods to take out the larger necromorphs, especially the enhanced necromorphs. The only way to kill enhanced necromorphs in one shot is to use a rod. And then we will just keep using the claws from the dead necromorphs. Unlike any others that spawn in. Enhanced necromorphs, you can tell which ones are the enhanced necromorphs. So they have like mossy skin like this one. There's other necromorphs that appear to be kind of dark. But it's like, yeah, these guys, the, the, the enhanced necromorphs are definitely more rotten. Like, you can see, like, their intestines and shit coming out like that. After things have cooled down, we can loot the area. Because as we do more things in this general area, there will be more, uh, there will be more enemies spawning in. After we grab the force gun, for instance, a pregnant and a lurker, I don't remember if it's one lurker or two, will spawn in. So there's the force gun. This is a gun that I definitely should have used earlier. Also, another good thing about using rods as well, aside from them killing pretty much every standard enemy in one shot, is that uh, if you shoot a pregnant with the rod, then the pregnant will actually die without spawning in any, uh, any like, boogers or lurkers. Brought in that barrel with me and uh, placed it where I did so that after we inject this guy with the enzyme... We'll just light up the spitter that comes out of the uh, vent over here. The spitter will come out of the vent. Wait for it to start walking towards us because they actually do have iframes whenever they come out of the vents. As you can see, that was that was just complete bullshit. I decided to take a claw with me because the uh, the standard leapers, or sorry, lurkers, not leapers. The standard lurkers will die in one shot from a necromorph claw. Yeah, it's really just a matter of uh, utilizing whichever weapon is going to kill things in one shot as much as possible. And if you're not going to use rods on the enhanced necromorphs, then you have no choice but to take out both of their arms. Isaac Clark, systems engineer. Engineer, have you seen Jacob Temple? I haven't. But I'm looking for someone, too. Dr. Nicole Brennan. Dr. Brennan? Doesn't she help people leave unitology? Yeah, but my mother. That's how we met. I hope she's okay. The unitologists here didn't like anyone questioning them. And since the captain died, they've all... snapped. Security request retrieved. Hello, security. This is Dr. Cross in Hydroponics. Something just hit the hull near food storage. We think it's a rogue asteroid. I have people injured from decompression. We need medics and crowd control right away. Oh my god. What the hell? Once we grab this uh, ruby semiconductor, another necromorph will pop out of the vent. You can 
also take this claw, because sometimes uh, the aggressor AI loves to spawn lurkers outside of this door. Pick up large med packs whenever you can. Because they're worth 5,000. Yep, case in point. Spawned out one. With a standard necromorph, though, a... Uh, a Claw Impale will do about uh, half its HP or so, at which point you can finish it off by just like getting rid of its other Claw. We'll turn off the jungle ambience to open the doors. I did sell the uh, force gun ammo, even though the force gun is uh, generally one of the better guns to use. Like I didn't know that at the at the time, but whenever I do like an improved video, which I should hopefully have out within a couple of weeks or so, I'll definitely be using the force gun more. They actually buffed up the force gun a lot in the remake. They changed the mechanics of the uh, exploders as well. For some reason, that guy just likes to move to the right. Like the second exploder that comes in, like they always just like to move to the right. I don't actually know why that is. Upon entering zero G, once we open this over here, we'll be accosted by two lurkers. There's nothing to impale with over here, and I was running uh, I was running pretty low on plasma cutter ammo, so I decided to just use the uh, pulse rifle here to take these guys out. The time to remove each tentacle is uh, slightly more with the uh, pulse rifle, and also the drop rate of the ammo is higher than the plasma cutter. Once we open the second one over here, there's going to be another lurker directly above us on this uh, platform over here. But he's already moving around. Typically, he likes to uh, go to the lip of that platform right there, and usually I take him out. Another wall guardian over there. That particular wall guardian was uh, where I died in my first attempt of playing this game on Impossible. I brought this explosive barrel with me because there is a leaper once we head through this uh, this door over here. 
If we throw an explosive barrel at a leaper, then all it takes is uh, dismembering one leg in order to kill it. Exiting zero gravity. come down this way another uh, another sploder will come out the window definitely a lot fewer sploders come out as opposed to in the uh, in the original game The aggressor AI decided to spawn one enemy out here this time. Sometimes the aggressor AI likes to spawn in uh, a lurker as well. I've had a leaper as well. Just be aware that, uh, you know, there's maybe about a two out of three chance that the aggressor AI will spawn enemies coming back through here. Now, once we come in here, there's going to be no enemies. Isaac, where are you? I have a very specific setup for this room, all right? So we're going to take all four bodies and make sure that they are sitting right in that corner next to that explosive tank. Then we're going to take that other explosive tank, blow up that tentacle, and we're going to put that other explosive tank right next to the vent there. Because once we kill this uh, Weezer over here, then we're going to have one Necromorph come out of the vent. We'll just blow him up with a barrel. And then we'll loot these lockers over here. And after we do that... There will be two infectors coming in to infect the bodies. The reason why we move that move those bodies over there is because the infectors always prioritize going to dead bodies. So once they do that, you can just blow up the barrel and kill them both in one shot. Don't got to deal with any enhanced necromorphs. Sorry, Isaac. Going. I'm going to camera. It looks like my little brother. Oh, it's just the rain. That's not possible. So after, uh, after this uh, calm over here, we get to deal with a. Uh, We get to deal with this guy. But because there's so much uh, because there's so much gunk on the floor. Because there's so much gunk on the floor, it's a little hard to get behind him. So do the best we can to just like uh, dismember two limbs. Quarantine lifted. As usual, once you destroy a brute, you get a node. After we destroy the Weezer in there, there's going to be a couple of uh, going to be a couple of uh, lurkers coming out the vents. Be extra careful. I got real lucky that I didn't get hit whenever I backpedaled into that other one. But we just got to take them out nice and slow. Recommendation, by the way, is that you head out the other door that I went out of before these leapers spawn or these lurkers spawned in. Because if you go back out the way you came, then the lurkers will just be like right on top of you. And more likely than not, they'll cause damage.
After getting the key card here, we can now uh, we can now reroute the power so that we have zero gravity. There will be a couple more uh, leapers coming out of here. I'm gonna set up the room by pulling these uh, by pulling these rods. We'll turn on gravity. Turn on zero gravity, I should say. Unfortunately, that rod over there was not a direct hit. So we've got to finish him the old-fashioned way. And after taking them out, we have to deal with a uh, couple of lurkers. The best way to deal with these guys is to head over this way and go up. And then land next to this tentacle over here. I like to use this tentacle as cover while I, uh... Well, okay, maybe not as cover. But it gives me enough time to actually identify where they are. Because we have to take them out nice and slow, right? Like, I can actually hear one's tentacles coming out, so... Just gotta look everywhere. Ooh, just barely missed. That was, uh, that was no bueno. You can see he's actually right up there. We can't, uh, we can't lob any grenades from the, uh, pulse rifle in between those cracks because there's, like, an invisible wall there. I'm trying to find a, uh, another way to efficiently get rid of him, but from this angle it's, uh, next to impossible. You can see it just did nothing. So yeah, in here, there's going to be a total of, uh, there's going to be a total of, like, uh, four leapers and, like, two lurkers. And also, here's the, uh, here's another one of the rigs for the, uh, master security clearance side quest. And once we're done killing all these enemies, we can go up here. And inject this Weezer.
get your pulse rifle ready because we're about to snipe out another tentacle. So first up, there's a lot of these guys, like these like singular tentacle whatever. I'm just going to call them tentacle bitches because I don't know what their official names are. And uh, tentacle bitches, yeah, they, they're, they're just in a very specific place and you just got to take them all out one at a time. Once we get to the top here, there's going to be a couple of uh, couple of enemies. Just a, a leaper and a lurker. Plasma cutter, definitely the best weapon for this particular situation. Stick and move. Stick and move. Entering zero gravity. Exiting zero gravity. Entering zero gravity. So you see those fins on the side of these hallways here? Whenever they close, that means the room is about to be set on fire. There's also going to be two necromorphs in here. Uh, we don't have anything to impale them. It's probably just as well to just grip them together and use the uh, pulse rifle to just blow them both up. Yeah, we just destroy these fuses from across the way. Don't get ballsy like I did. Wait for it to ignite, and then you go. Upon going into this room, there will be Warning. another enemy pops out. Stand clear of filtration tubes. 
We can expect another uh, enhanced necromorph as well. We destroy this fuse, get that node. Another text log. We'll head into this room right here. Inject the enzyme, kill this Weezer. And then once we uh, come out here, there's another enhanced Necromorph. We'll just impale him. Except, uh... In my case, I ran into a semi-rare bug that seems to happen where I impaled the Lurker and uh, it sent him through the wall. I have no idea why that happened, but I'm looking everywhere for him. I thought, well, maybe he's going to come out of a vent. But no, there he is, twerking in the ceiling. I keep trying to get him to come out of the vent because I don't want him to come out of another vent later and like jump in the middle of me whenever I'm trying to do other things. But nah, he's 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 stuck up there permanently. Yeah, he's uh, stuck in a place where he can't actually get into the small little vent cubby. No idea what happened there. Moving right along. That necromorph is left to twerk in the ceiling for the rest of eternity. our last uh, Weezer. So we can destroy these uh, things over here. Thank you. The Leviathan's metabolism is slowing. Cross, something's up. It must have worked. You gave it enough enzyme to dissolve a freighter. Okay, I'm unlocking food storage. Quickly get back there and space the bastard while we have the chance. You heard the lady. It's time to space that bastard. Before we do that, though, we're going to take a quick pit stop, recharge our stasis, and use this bench, as there are currently no enemies to get in our way. And we have a lot of nodes that we can use to fully upgrade our contact beam to as high as it can go at this point in the game. I generally only upgrade the suit if there's uh, a pretty significant uh, stasis upgrade that will either give us more energy or uh, give us longer duration on stasis because energy, uh, energy capacity and duration are like the two biggest stasis upgrades that you want. Size is actually really not that big of a deal. Exiting zero gravity. Now we're just going to make our way back.
Very good, very efficient kill. Coming back through here, all of these vents just explode. There's no enemies that are going to come out of them. It was the same jump scare in the original game. Upon returning to Hydroponics Central, I'm going to go into the boss room, but I'm not actually going to fight the boss yet. There's a couple of necromorphs that are uh, going to get directly in our way. Try to lure them in one at a time and take them out. Try to stay close to the door while opening it, otherwise it closes pretty fast. Then chuck that claw in order to get rid of that uh, lurker right there. I don't like waiting forever for their claws to spawn out. So as long as we uh, as long as we don't uh, jump off of this platform right here, the boss fight will not start. And this is actually a very good opportunity to go ahead and loot the room, because you can see all the glowy things around here. These are all uh, these are all things that you can just uh, loot with telekinesis. So if you want to go ahead and uh, do that, get all of the ammo drops and all of the uh, health drops that are around. You can do all that before uh, actually triggering the boss fight. But of course telekinesis doesn't actually uh, go that far. We don't have enough upgrades for that. Also these... Uh, <clears throat> These explosive barrels aren't really uh, aren't really worth too terribly much. The contact beam is uh, going to be more beneficial in the actual fight. sell all these uh, all these extra med packs we also don't really need the oxygen tanks that much if you know where you're going you don't need the oxygen tanks but if it's like your first playthrough or something then yeah sure keep the oxygen tanks now we're going to move all of these uh, contact beam ammunitions into our inventory just to prepare ourselves for the fight and then we are going to go to town. Aggressor AI decides to just throw an enemy in our way. That door could have actually closed on me and caused damage to me. Right, so this boss is a little different from in the original, obviously, because 
You can jet around. We'll just use the secondary fire. The secondary fire consumes uh, two units of ammunition. We'll just strafe right as the tentacle is coming out. And left. Well, sometimes the tentacles can actually shift positions. But once you destroy the, uh, once you destroy the cores on the tentacles, all you need to do is, uh, wait for the stun roar over here. The contact beam will actually, uh, blow right through any of the projectiles. Every time it roars, you can just use the contact beam and, uh, Get it to clinch up a bunch. Detected. No, it's expelling all its gas reserves. It must be close. I need to finish it off. So we gotta watch out for the tentacles now during this phase. You usually pop off, uh, what, two full contact beams before we have to dodge another tentacle. And at this height, they're all going to. Well, the one on the right is just going to go to the bottom. Pretty easy boss, though. survivors. He said they were building an SOS beacon. Did they finish it? He said it was nearly done, but I haven't heard from him in a while. I can't leave yet. I need to make sure the air is safe to breathe, but if you can find that SOS beacon, call for rescue. I will. Mining deck. Okay, got it. And if I meet Jacob? Tell him. I'll find him. He's all I want to see. An SOS beacon. Someone jettisoned all the others. Isaac, there's a shortcut to the mining deck. Near Cross's workstation. I'll get it open. Goddamn. We might actually get out of this nightmare. With the higher level suits, you also get an increase to the Kinesis Grab range. So you can grab things from further away, which is super helpful. But keep in mind that uh, as you grab things from further away, there is still a travel time for that further object to reach you, so obviously the further away it is, the longer it takes to actually reach you before you can actually pick up the item. So a couple of uh, very good questions about Kinesis, actually. Uh, is throw damage worth it to prioritize? I don't really think so. I think that it is good for saving some ammo here and there. Uh, but definitely worth to get it if you can spare the nodes. That's a master chest over there. We got to come back to get that later. And 
And another question I got is, can objects injure enemies on their way to traveling towards you? And the answer is uh, the answer is no. But I have had a I have had a an interesting uh, an interesting kill. Station now accessible. Thank where I was uh, dragging a barrel, and then I released the barrel while it was still traveling in the air, and uh, it actually exploded and uh, hit an enemy that was behind me. I still took damage, but it was still really cool to watch. I think I will upload that as a uh, as a YouTube short, so you guys can see what I'm talking about. This is one instance of a thing that can happen with the aggressor AI as well. It's just like random jump scares. Great. So going back to medical real quick. Wanted to go this way so that I could uh, begin initiating the uh, premeditated malpractice side quest. So we'll go into the research wing over here. Be aware that the aggressor AI can spawn enemies on the way back. Basically, it works kind of like an alien isolation, where there's a director AI. And the better you're doing at the game, the more likely the game will uh, spawn enemies at you whenever you're trying to backtrack through an area. Especially if your health is higher and you have, like, higher stasis. I also decided to go ahead and uh, get all my nodes back from the pulse rifle because I wasn't really using the pulse rifle all that much beginning DNA analysis match found for Brandt Harris mining contractor Aegis 7 registered physician Dr. Charles Mercer warning severe DNA abnormalities found Rig tracking is available to trace possible contagion. Authorize. Harris, what did Mercer do to you? Authorize. Syncing logs and points of interest to Rig Locator. Thank you for your commitment to public health. Once we've begun the side quest, we can uh, make our way back over to Mercer's office, that general area. Watch a little exposition, watch a little bit of uh, subplot. It's one of the major changes that I like about this game is that they uh, is they actually expounded on a lot of the story details and did a uh, much better job of making them all link together. For instance, Chin being the necromorph that Hammond jettisons out of the escape pod. Or like Harris being the uh, hunter. Oh yeah, while we're here, going to open this level 2 door because we totally missed this uh, the line gun earlier. The line gun is also very different in that it no longer shoots mines with the secondary fire, but instead you set laser traps. And there have been some pretty interesting uses of it that I've seen on YouTube so far. Uh, I haven't actually experimented with it much yet, especially in the context of uh, coming up with some good line gun setups to avoid mobs. But I'll definitely play with it later, maybe in the New Game Plus run. So that Sploder came out, and another enemy came out along with him. Got rid of both of them.
Easy, obvious answer. Blow up the splitter. Uh, that was recording. Here, look up for me. Just a sliver of bone between us and Marcus. Relevance. It won't be like Gage's seven and that unpleasantness with the groups. Wasn't a nurse when I when I did that. This errand you want me to do in ore storage. Ah. The miners won't like it. They're probably as narrow-minded as the miners in the colony, yes. Tormenting someone for being a little different. Don't let me deceive you. Oh, it's scary. Yeah. Yeah, they do. I'm ready. Trying to show me. They're hungry. They're coming. They'll make us whole. Oh, Doctor. I see it now. The marker speaks. We can answer. Tell me how. Tracking related rig activity. Next, we're going to make our way over to mining and engineering. At mining engineering. Check station when departing. But, uh, yeah, we got to make sure that we exit from the opposite side of the train. The mining deck systems are running haywire. Great. Let me work on the elevators. Any idea where Temple's SOS beacon might be? I'll check the mining control room. The launch tubes there could send out a beacon easy. Anyone there? Hammond? Where are you? In the vents, hoping they don't hear me. Yeah, those things are everywhere. No, the Unitologists. They're all here on the crew deck. They've lost it. One of them stabbed her friend in the head. He just stood there. He, he fucking smiled. They're going to... Hammond! Shit! Lost the signal again. We gotta find that beacon, Isaac. Fast. <laughs> Yeah, you can see, like, several of those shots were, like, would have been direct hits, but sometimes... Whoa, there's something near you. A sealed room. Hit detection just doesn't work correctly. Homebrewed security lockdown. The miners locked up some nice gear. Too bad. 
I could have put it to work. You still could, if we find the right rig codes. The captain's rig won't get me in? No, that lockdown's a custom job. But I can use the captain's codes to create an override framework. Didn't you find a senior officer's rig? A few more like that, and we're in business. Okay, framework's done. Find the rigs, download their codes into a bridge console, and it'll build you a master security override. <laughs> Security clearance required. This is weird. Two of the mining subducts are locked down, even though all systems are running. I'm gonna figure this out. Upon entering this elevator, we're gonna be, uh going to be locked into a little siege section here. In the original game you had to fight like eight necromorphs, but here you only have to fight four. So we'll start by uh, blowing off that one's limb and chucking it back at him. And then there's going to be enhanced necromorphs, so we have to take out both the arms. Bit of an awkward walk cycle there, so... Couldn't deal with him quite the way I wanted to. Sorry, did I say four? The game only spawned three enemies at me this time. So you can see some uh, survivors set up some line gun mines here. This is what the line gun mines look like. I didn't actually use them in this playthrough though. But uh, yeah, you can place uh, you can place like boxes here in order to get around the line gun mines. Drop this one over here. Slide to the right. And then we can go this way, and uh, in this room we will continue the premeditated malpractice side quest. profit margin, we get screwed. God? So, you can put that osmium down, or I can break your arms first. I worked with people like you on Aegis 7. They'd steal my power nodes. Leave me to dig with no light. Hey, hey! Get off me! 
But when they abandon you in the dark, it's not empty. The marker whispered its revelations there. Now I understand them. Do you want to hear? Warning. Untrained personnel may not use suit kiosk. No, no, stop, please! I said please when they shut me in. Screamed it too. I promise I won't laugh like they did. Warning. Suit kiosk is obstructed. Serious injury may occur. Oh, God! Help me! Incident report filed to bridge by Dr. Nicole Brennan. See related rig activity. I am trying to leave these line gun mines up because they will conserve ammo for us. Man, this guy is pretty healthy for someone who uh, got his arm severed, right? Got to make sure that we take out that uh, that infector before he spawns in more enhanced necromorphs for us to deal with. Then next, put the battery in. I will say it kind of sucks that my favorite jump scare from the original game doesn't make a reappearance. So once we come over here, we have to walk uh, about halfway over. And uh, this triggers the appearance of a lot of boogers, right? So once we hit this elevator button, the boogers will actually not join us on the elevator. And what that allows us to do is go back and snatch this here uh, fire extinguisher. As long as we don't throw it right next to us, we can use it to blow up all these boogers. Level three security clearance required. tubes are sealed. I need a deck administrator's rig to get them open. The deck admin is Supervisor Dallas. He's on the processing sub deck. I've got rig activity for a Jacob Temple 2 maintenance sub deck. Maybe he left the SOS beacon there. Just hope you can reach it through these malfunctions. Not malfunctions. Traps. <laughs> the miner's way of holding the line. Shit. Okay. I'll unlock the sub decks. Make sure that beacon's not wired to anything.
putting away the line gun. We'll go ahead and sell the line gun ammo too, because I won't be using it this playthrough. I know, I know. I probably missed out on something really cool this playthrough. Right, so from here we have 18 nodes. And I decided to dump everything into the force gun. Finished fully upgrading the plasma cutter as well. We want to get that size upgrade for the stasis as well. Yeah, in the original game, the uh, the necromorph would just. Uh, jump scare you while you're getting off the bench like you know just whisper sweet nothings into your ear but yeah from here now we're starting to use the force gun I too have begun to spread the gospel of the force gun Also, uh, these, uh, these flares over here can actually blow up and kill things, just FYI. So be careful using uh, any guns that have AoE around the flares, because those will actually blow back and do damage to you. I'm off deck, but I'll be right back. I got a call from another survivor. He sounded terrified. I'm gonna lock up the SOS so you can go and get him. Best launch window is not for a while anyway, and he sounds like he's worth the risk. He's a doctor. Uh, Mercer, I think. About time. I got a fucking break. I love you. Please be careful with me. I like to just go ahead and throw these two explosive barrels here to get rid of that pregnant. And after that, there's going to be an enhanced necromorph. Move around here a little bit in order to spawn the next, uh, this leaper over here. Which, funny enough, we severed his tail that time. And if we sever his tail, we can just throw it right back at him. Kill him. Having a bit of a having a bit of a time. Trying to grab and chuck a limb right back at this guy. As you can see, expecting one more enemy. 
It seems like whenever you throw a fan at the enhanced necromorphs, it always prioritizes getting rid of their heads first. So as you can see, we break the fuse from the other side, from outside, just shoot through a window. Then we can get the contact energy schematic as well, which allows us to buy contact energy later. So this is our first encounter with the armored necromorphs. And the armored necromorphs seem to have about as much HP as the uh, enhanced necromorphs. And on top of that, you can't shoot them in the leg. Because they have body armor. These guys are like security guys. Security officers. So as we destroy uh, as we destroy these uh, asteroids here, we'll also have enemies spawn in. With these leapers here, be extra careful because when they leap through the air in zero gravity, they do so very fast. And of course, as per usual, prioritize using the claws in order to take out the uh, the lurkers. Worst comes to worst, you can use a contact beam while their tentacles are out and kill them that way. But uh, I opted to go back this way and funnel them through out of zero gravity. Especially having one stasis unit left. Plasma Cutter remains the best way to deal with both of those two particular enemies. And then we can uh, destroy the fuse on the back of that door. Zero gravity. This room was an absolute pain in the ass in the original game. After you get rid of all the asteroids and turn off the gravity, like a million enemies spawn. But uh, fortunately this time it's only half a million enemies. And you also have the option of being able to make your way into that security room door over there, which you would normally spend a note on. Can now be restored. And then you can just duck in there and 
be able to funnel enemies in that way. But otherwise, the force gun is your best friend here. So all these guys are spawning in, and uh, yeah, you can actually use, you can actually melee through the door in order to take them out one at a time. Otherwise, we just funnel them in here one at a time. Uh, they don't seem to come through any of the vents in this room. So that means that the only way that they uh, actually come in is directly in here. Also, the, uh, the sploters will sometimes try to attack you from outside the room and uh, just kill themselves because they are dumb as hell. So I call this cheese right here, I call it Limburger, because these guys stink. Once we aggro, they'll still be aggroed onto us. They try to come at us through the door, or through the vent, whichever. Grabbing this splitter sack, moving around here because as we go a little further to try to get to uh, the mining supervisor's rig, we have more shit to deal with. Supervisor Dallas, final log. Now I've made sure they can't leave this sub deck. And neither can I. See what they do to the bodies, what they become. And I cannot let that happen to me. At least if I don't have any limbs. bastard.
so clearing out our inventory down to just uh, the bare essentials once again. The administrator's rent changed location. You got it? I got it. I'll check the maintenance subdeck for Temple's Beacon. <laughs> Should be noted actually that uh, force energy is actually a pretty common spawn. So, in this room, there are two infectors. The first infector I got rid of with the contact beam. The contact beam will still destroy infectors in one shot. After we get rid of both of them, we'll just chuck an explosive barrel down the hall to get rid of that wall guardian. And if it doesn't get rid of the wall guardian the first time, let's we'll chuck another. Then we could go down into this door in order to do the next part of the uh, Nicole side quest. But not before we uh, take this guy out first. Only storage one and storage two are doors that you can actually go into. I decided to just go ahead and dismember this one so that I can use claws on uh, other xenomorphs, xenomorphs, necromorphs that are about to spawn in. Once we come in here though, there's gonna be more boogers. This is what the force gun should be used for. Or the flamethrower. Either or. I'm not your real dad, Pass Carsey. There's some more goodies in here. And after we grab this ruby semiconductor, one will bust out of the vent over here. It might actually be recommended to just go ahead and uh, take him out in that room so that the enemies specifically funnel out of the vent. Otherwise, you get pincer attacked over here. This is uh, definitely a certified pass Carsey moment upon actually examining it again. Yeah. 
By some small miracle, I didn't get hit here at all. is responsible for the outbreak. I need to understand how. It's signal. When it pulses, that signal can trigger alterations in genetic code. Neural structure, even. You've felt it, haven't you? But how do I stop it? Mercer must know. He's taken all his marker research up to his room on the crew deck and sealed... No, no. Sealed it? Do you know how? Please, I need Mercer's data. No, he'll kill you. I won't have more deaths on my conscience. Unitology was all I had after I lost Amelia. Look what it's come to. Terrence, listen. I mean, if it weren't for you, I never would have made it this far, because you made me stick with it. Well, just remember, I'm giving you up for six months so you can do this. You loved Amelia. As much as I love Isaac, but if I can't cure this outbreak, I'll never see him again. Please, help me. Three, nine, two, seven, seven. You must get into Mercer's room. That coach should still work. Thank you. Here. These are safer with you. Dr. Brennan. Nicole. The only thing Mercer ever feared was death. Now, I doubt he's afraid of anything. <laughs> So this is a uh, Resident Evil 4 type auto scroller. One that I absolutely loathed in the original game. It's just a matter of uh, severing the tentacles, throwing explosions, explosive barrels at the uh, at any of the other necromorphs. The others are spitters, so we absolutely want to get rid of them as quickly as possible. Fortunately, we uh, don't have to take this gondola back. Isaac. Oh my god, I can't believe you're here. I thought I'd never see you again. I'm gonna get us home. 
There's an SOS beacon nearby. We can call for help. The beacon, right. They locked it in the workshop, but my clearance can get us in this way. I can unlock the workshop from here. Nicole! There's so much I need to tell you. I know. We'll have time, I promise. Let's get you that beacon. Everyone's counting on us. So the first enemies will pop in over here. The force gun only peels away the skin the first shot. It maybe takes out like a third of their HP. So like trying to grab a limb and chuck it back at them won't kill. But two, maybe three force gun shots will kill one necromorph. It's done. The workshop's open. I've never seen you at work. You're a surgeon with that thing. I got your back. Okay. How do I reach you? No, focus on launching that SOS beacon. There's maintenance ducts everywhere. I'll catch up. If you see any more, you're high. Okay? Cross my heart. I love you, Isaac. You can do this. You'll put things back the way they were. And make us whole again. She'll find her way back. She's a trooper, huh? I'm heading back to the mining control room. I'll launch the beacon. You watch out for Nicole. Assuming the system doesn't fizzle out again. Stay sharp. So for the flashers on the walls there, yeah, you can just sever a limb and they should die. There's one uh, node. Right outside that door, so... It's very easy to miss too, so make sure you grab it. Gravity. Yeah, we can just take we can just take the uh, zero gravity back this time. We don't have to take the uh, gondola back, which is good because the gondola was absolute, absolutely insufferable in the first game. going to take this nice and slow because there's a lot of tentacle bitches around here. Just keep an eye out. We can also explore under here because there's another door that we can uh, open with the clearance that we got from uh, Supervisor Dallas. Yeah, it's like these these pulsating sacks of fat hide the uh, hide the tentacle bitches. There's only a few of them down here, but still got to keep an eye out. So just listen, listen for the cracks. The 
this little utility room here. Clearance confirmed. Exiting zero gravity. Has plenty of goodies. Power node especially. And the flamethrower upgrade. So that's good pickings on energy nodes already. Entering zero gravity. Here, there's some contact energy just floating around. We can't go into any of these uh, any of these doors over here. quick cursory glance to make sure that I didn't forget anything. Exiting zero gravity. Now that we have the SOS beacon, we can return to mining. Of course the power fails, so we got a few more enemies to get rid of. Two lurkers to start with. If there's extra claws, we can use those. Occasionally you can uh, sever two tentacles with one plasma cutter, but that's like super rare. I find that the force gun doesn't really do too terribly much against uh, against leapers either, as you can see. Like it's very good for regular necromorphs, and it's very good for grouping enemies together. Also, this guy was just not stopping for long enough to let me sever the other limb. After we get rid of these four enemies, we can proceed. So basically after a line gun laser comes into contact with an enemy, 
there's a certain amount of time that you have left before the line gun laser just disappears. Good to keep that in mind. But it still seems to operate at full power. Now that we got level 3, we can open this door, grab an extra power node, semiconductors. Be careful with that fire hydrant there. If it blows up, it'll hurt you for one damage. trap the launch tubes too. They're scrap. Well, that's great. We can't just toss the beacon out a window. Uh, there's gotta be something. The asteroid. The one in the mining bay for smelting. What about it? If I attach the SOS beacon to that asteroid and then launch it away from the ship, we'd get a clean broadcast. And you'd get yourself killed. The machinery in there is still running, Isaac. Then it probably kept those things out too. This is our best shot, Kendra. I'm taking it. So once we're in here... We're going to encounter uh, a couple of exploders, and they'll group up by the door, so you can just blow them up. I decided to save this exploding sack for later, so just plopped it right by the door, because more enemies will spawn on the other side of that door later. And from here, we can just yank the battery. Doing a quick cursory glance to uh, see if there's anything that I can prepare for. Here I decided to start upgrading the flamethrower, even though I don't really use it for much in this playthrough. trying to move some of these extra contact beams into storage, but I still want to keep a stack of contact beam ammo for whenever we fight brutes. We 
your boy really, really does want that suit upgrade. 3,500. 35,000. Sanman go sin in. Upon upgrading the uh, suit, we can get more damage out of Kinesis and also upgrade our uh, energy a little bit as well. Moving right along. On the way back, uh, some flames will come out of these, whatever the hell these things are, and they will hurt you. Get the heck out of here, you nerd. Yeah, the force gun will uh, kill necromorphs in like two shots, like standard necromorphs in two shots. Pretty quickly. More goodies on the other shelf there, Pascar. So you gonna get them? Yeah. So what I did there? Don't be a don't be a dummy. Don't be a dummy like Pascar. He was because I could have blown up that barrel with the force gun. The force gun does also kill uh, the standard lurkers in one shot. It takes like two force gun in order to take out a uh, in order to take out a leaper, I think. But we're also about to come across enhanced leapers. Once we destroy those uh, two gravity tethers there, we'll have a couple of enhanced leapers crowding us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the alt fire on the force gun in order to group them together. And then it'll only take two plasma cutter shots in order to dismember each of their limbs. But I probably would have been better off just going ahead and just finishing them off the rest of the way with the force gun. I just really hate the mechanics of leapers. They're fast and they take so many shots to dismember their limbs. And they're always like put in really awkward positions. With like other enemies. All right, 
Alright, so... I usually like to exit from the bottom left here. Caution. Gravity tether disengaged. Fortunately, we don't have to go back in in order to uh, refill our oxygen. There's a couple of uh, oxygen recharge stations over here. In order to kill uh, lurkers in one shot with the force gun, you have to wait for their tentacles to come out. Uh, there is none such luck against enhanced lurkers, by the way. Uh, for enhanced lurkers, use the plasma pistol. Plasma cutter, excuse me. Don't use the force gun against them, unless you're trying to group them up. But even from pretty far away, yeah, you can just use one force gun shot to kill. That first force gun shot that I fired just now was uh, a little too far away to actually affect the lurker, but it does it does take one force gun shot to be able to kill the level one lurkers. Payload 8772 is no longer tethered. Untrained personnel must leave the mining bay immediately. Now we've taken out this gravity tether. There's one more lurker on the way back out. And also the uh, the thing that is going around the uh, asteroid here. The weird gyro looking thing is no longer moving as well. So we can just place the beacon and we don't have to worry about getting slashed on the way out. One of many super obnoxious instant kills that they got rid of. Instant deaths. I mean, if they're going to rebalance the game around having Impossible be the, uh... Exiting zero gravity. Be the permadeath difficulty, then it's actually good that they got rid of a lot of these really, really dumb instant kills. Right, so we just got to time our movements here with these. I usually like to uh, move first and then drag the battery. Because we move super slow while we have the battery out otherwise. Uh, if you use toggle aim running, which is a uh, minor exploit that I will actually probably use more of in my next video of this game, then you can uh, carry it around pretty fast. Because with toggle aim running, you actually do move like 15% faster. Also, pass car. See, that is that is not that is not the 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 sack. That is not the sack you want. We have to drag this battery in in order for these other enemies to spawn in. Oh, actually, no, no. Those enemies were aggressor AI. Never mind. Just don't worry about it. I thought about finishing this, but I decided to go back and uh, segment it again. broadcasting wide bands. I'll align the receiver. This will take a minute. Head on back to the tram station. Hazardous anomaly detected. Quarantine activated. The hunter is back. 
Be careful with this uh, with these stasis jars in, jars in here. With that hunter there, the system can't lift the lockdown. Override the manual door release. I'll try. Yeah, these stasis jars over here. Uh, if you're too close to them when they explode, they will do one HP of damage to you. But at least like the lurk, at least like the lingering stasis will slow them down pretty good. Lifted. So we have to use stasis on this guy on the way out. Otherwise he'll hit us. Or you could use the force gun as well, but stasis will allow you to go back to running a lot quicker. Kind of a waste of ammo, honestly. As we come back through here... The uh, line gun mines are gone. But we can just go ahead and leave. Because while these guys are spawning in, like, they can't hurt you or anything. And then we'll immediately go back to deck A. See you never, assholes. I think it's gone. But I can't be sure. The system's bugged out again. I'm getting those camera glitches. The ones that look like my brother. Waving at me. At least the beacon's away. I'm aligning the... Wait. The ray receiver not responding. Oh, shit. The comms ray. We never fixed it. Guess it wasn't a broken encoder. Then let's hope that 48 hours estimate was wrong, too. No comms, no rescue. <sighs> Take the tram to the bridge. I'll hack open the door to communications. You see what's happening with the array. And don't worry about Nicole. Like Hammond said. Do the smart thing. Right. So, more divider heads in here. It's not really even worth it to open any of these lockers. Just go ahead and get out of here. Honestly, I should have waited until later to come through engineering to open this other door here. Actually, do I open it now or do I open it later? Entering zero gravity. I think I just came in here to... Uh... Yeah, yeah, to get this other... Uh... To get this, uh, the master security clearance upgrade. That's right. This is the sec... This is like uh, one of the last few ones. So the uh, that last uh, that last one will be right over here. Oh, sorry. Uh, that, that 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 thing was really, really, really loud. So I'm sorry if you had trouble hearing me. It was it was really tough to speak over that thing. Engineering log. Chief Engineer Ariel Rousseau reporting. Centrifuge maintenance is... Oh, what was I saying? Uh, I haven't slept right since they brought that marker on board. I'm a little, uh... uh the only thing I remember clearly is that engine inspection. I went into the chamber, and instead of the primary engine, there was... It was a heart. A heart the size of the room, just pumping and pumping. And Anderson said something, and when I looked back, it was a machine again. But I can still hear that pumping in the distance. It's almost peaceful. Could that help me sleep? Oh, if I can get close enough. Yeah. Go right inside, maybe, where it's warm and dark? Ooh, yeah. That makes sense. We'll just 
just use stasis and dismember that guy. But yeah, as it turns out, it seems that the uh, the marker can just make people hallucinate their way into an early death. The marker do kind of suck like that. I mean. So she thought it was like, I don't know, a uterus or something. I'm sorry, that thing is really loud. Oh, is it really a System Shock reference? Huh. You know, I never played System Shock. Probably won't even get the chance to if it comes out like literally the same month as Resident Evil 4 Remake. And that kind of pisses me off. Cannot determine clearance level. Master security override required. Entering vacuum. Entering vacuum. While we're here, let's go ahead and open this. Really, I should have waited until later after I got the master security clearance. Still gonna move around here a little bit just to see if there's any more enemies that I gotta kill. Not that it even really matters. Exiting vacuum. But now we're gonna make our way back to the bridge. Man, there's way too many games coming out in March, and I don't like it. Bridge. Because they're all games that I want to play, and they're all games that I want to do videos on. But if they're all coming out, like, way too close to each other like that, then it's like, how am I supposed to get anything done? I hate it. Oh god, not this jump scare again. Come on, hurry up. I feel sorry for that guy. Poor bastard. Probably Hammond. USM Valor. They must have heard our SOS. That fast? What's a military ship doing way out here? Out on patrol? Whatever. Right now I take a rescue from a fucking magpie. Head for communications. Once we fix the comms array, we can get all the answers we need. I'd take a rescue from an Elster unit too. Once we enter the bridge, we'll trigger a quarantine event. Quarantine this is where we get to uh, see the full potential of the force gun. A 
especially with uh, the sploters here. We just group them all together with the secondary fire and we blow them up. Once again, group of sploter with a uh, regular ass necromorph. And kaboom. We can just keep running a circle around here. This uh, this leaper isn't going to get us yet. Also, the gravity well doesn't actually cause any damage to us either. It's actually a good thing that... Uh, it's actually a good thing that we ended up not uh, blowing that guy up yet because his friend just wandered into the gravity well. And we're going to reload again. Got two more sploters. That one killed himself. Careful with the secondary fire on the force gun though. Because it does consume three ammo every time you use that. But for fast enemies, secondary fire from the force gun is absolutely good at shutting them down. I'm getting weird feedback spikes on local comms. If I was wrong, the comms array is spreading. No, that's not it. So, uh, uh, the door to communications should be open. You can head down to the comms control station. And I. I think someone's listening. Log retrieved. Fine, then. We'll waste more time and record this. Satisfied? No one wants satisfied. We have a dead miner. We can't sedate Grant Harris. Grant Harris originally your patient. Captain, Harris is suffering from a dementia that we don't fully understand. He was making progress until Dr. Mercer took his case over my objections. I've read that. And frankly, this, this vendetta against Dr. Mercer just sounds like more of your bigotry. My what? Do you deny that you've counseled members of our church at Trinity Institutology? I'm telling you that Mercer's treatments are immoral and dangerous. And why does he keep taking Harris to hydroponics? Medical is a sanctuary, not Mercer's private lab, so stop covering for him. More accusations, still no proof. You know your way out. He won't stop with Brian Harris, Captain. You know that. Tracking related rig activity. I would actually recommend that you finish this side quest and go directly to hydroponics so that you can get the uh, prototype uh, stasis unit. Which actually makes stasis cause damage and also actually stops enemies in their tracks. Albeit the animation is a little different. Going back through here in order to collect that uh, that rig that I missed before. But yeah, this is the absolute earliest that uh, you can get the prototype stasis unit. And it actually is very handy, especially for the uh, tweakers coming up. Cannot recommend it enough for tweakers.
gravity. Exiting vacuum. The earliest that we can get the Master Override is the next chapter, by the way. In case you were wondering. Because we have to have access to crew quarters in order to be able to get the last rig. Even though we can see the rig, we can't pick it up with Kinesis, unfortunately. So, once we get in here, there's a couple of wall guardians to kill. Although you can also just uh, run up kind of close to them, like not close enough to trigger their instant kill, and actually kill them with two force gun shots. As you can see, the flamethrower doesn't always have perfect success in killing them in one shot. We'll use our level 3 clearance to open these lockers. Clearance confirmed. And also refill our stasis while we're at it. make our way through the comms access hall. There's another level 3 door right here. Clearance confirmed. Grab some force energy there too. Communications array offline. A repair technician has been notified. Communications log. First comms operator Bailey reporting. I want this on record. The ship is under attack, but Captain Matthias has refused to issue a distress call. And we all know why. This whole operation is illegal. Ages 7 was sealed off. They knew it, we knew it, and we all kept our mouths shut. That ends now. Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. This is USG Ishimura calling C. Wait, what the hell? Jesus. He took the whole comms array offline. It's over. The Valor's in a holding position. How's the comms array? Huh. Fry? Someone hotwired the dishes together and blew up the system. So we're screwed. No, it was sloppy work. Some of the dishes are intact. If I replace them and create a new circuit with no gaps, we can broadcast the signal. Short range only, but it should work. Okay, do it. I'll, uh, keep an eye on things here. 
So someone asked, do pulse rifle grenades kill wall guardians in one shot? Uh, they kill wall guardians in two shots. Clearance confirmed. Behind every uh, clearance door, there's usually a uh, there's usually like a node as well, but sometimes there's not. Unsent message retrieved from array buffer. Primary support, Captain Benjamin Mathias, to Paragon Jordan, Una. This will be my last transmission. Afterwards, I'll make sure our pilgrimage can be completed without interference. We have successfully brought the Holy Marker on board. Dr. Kine, an expert on the original Marker, is deciphering its secrets. Uh, forgive me for quarantining you just seven. Director Eckhart's work may have been inconvenienced, but they're suffering some sort of epidemic. Regardless, Planet Crack begins tomorrow on schedule. CEC can scratch out its illegal operation now that the true prize is ours. Let's see Earth go try to cover this up. Altman be praised. Matthias out. Once we come into this room here, there's going to be an enhanced uh, leaper. Enhanced leapers will take four force gun shots to kill. So to start this puzzle, we're going to pull down all of the uh, we're going to pull down all of the valid dishes, and we'll just throw away the other ones because they are so much garbage. Basically, the idea is that we uh, is that we complete a circuit from the uh, power source at the bottom all the way up to the antenna in the center of the room. So to start, we'll put the left up over there. Because there is not a single piece that allows us to just move straight up, we have to basically zigzag it. So we go down left, and then left up over here. It had appeared that I was missing one, and it's over there. And then down right, and then left up over here. And the circuit is complete. Easy. Ready to transmit. I think you got it. Try opening a channel to the Valor. quick cursory glance to make sure that uh, I didn't miss anything. Now we can hit this panel in the center right here. This 
is USM Valor, broadcasting on all frequencies to USG Ishimura in response to your SOS. We've picked up your escape pod number 47 and are en route to your position. This message will repeat every 30 seconds until you respond. <laughs> Escape pod. Oh, fuck. The pod Hammond jettisoned. It had chip. That creature was inside. No, 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 no. USM Valor, come in. Come in, Valor. Oh, her signal isn't strong enough. Can we deploy the long range antenna? No, something's blocking the blast doors over the comms array. The hell? There'll be a manual release over at maintenance. I'll go. Keep trying to reach them. Now we're gonna make our way over to maintenance. As soon as we get out of here, there's gonna be a couple of enemies in the way. That guy was still spawning in, so trying to uh, chuck a uh, chuck a box at him just didn't work. And uh, for some reason, the weird collision here just prevented me from actually hitting him. So the hell with it. That necromorph is bleeding out, so if you see a pool of blood there, that means it's dead. Node to the left here. Colors on the wall makes it a little easy to miss. Even though it's like right there. Just keep an eye out for it, will ya? And on this tram over here, you can uh, pick up an item. There was one like right there on the wall that we just missed. It's just like a med kit, just like a thousand credit med kit. Once we come into this door, we're going to have our first encounter with a divider. So we'll uh, go as quickly as we can into this room with this shop over here. The divider can't follow us in here. We'll go ahead and uh, clear out our inventory here real quick. Thanking some of these stasises for later. Once we, uh, once we're ready. What we're going to do is we're going to lure the divider into the room and then we'll stun him and let the door close on him. Dividers cannot go through the uh, cannot go through the vents. So, no more divider. Before we head up the elevator, going to uh, upgrade the plasma cutter the rest of the way.
Gotta equip the force gun here because there's an enhanced necromorph in this elevator. With this uh, final upgrade, you can burn the limbs off of an enhanced necromorph in one shot. It just takes a little bit of time for the limbs to burn off. Then we're going to loot all these rooms really quick. View one more cutscene and save the game. Cannons. Manual targeting like before. I can shoot it right off the hull. I got this. You focus on the Valor. Will do. So for the Leviathan, there's a very specific strat that I use. Here's the trick to the fight. Uh, you can whittle down the HP of all the cores without actually destroying them. Every time you destroy a core, the Leviathan will get more and more aggressive. So we'll just uh, use this opportunity to uh, whittle down the HP while the Leviathan is less aggressive. It's not HP based, it's just all based on how many cores are destroyed. And, uh, after 15 direct hits from the uh, ADS cannons, we can move on to the next core. Just uh, don't fire 16 shots. Or do, I'm not your real dad. Just make sure you dodge that tentacle. The tentacle extends itself all the way back like that. That means it's going to drag. Usually drags after like, what, three attempts at trying to hit you? Maybe? After which point you absolutely have to uh, do zero gravity. that first shot you get like a little confirmation chime whenever you hit successfully So that was 15 shots for that guy. And now we're going to go all the way over here to the left and we are going to destroy our first core. We sink ourselves to the ADS cannon, refill our oxygen, get down here. Watch ourselves. After destroying the first core, we go all the way back over to the other side and destroy the core on the right. Reason being, because we need to have room in order to be able to dodge the uh, space mines during phase three. 
But upon destroying this first core, we trigger phase two. Wherein it's going to start uh, firing... Uh, it's going to start firing uh, tumors at us. From like the two maws on either side of the core. So now it has like ranged attacks on top of us having to dodge those tentacles. And also on top of that... Uh, the Leviathan also destroys the, whichever ADS cannon you were using. So keep that in mind too, if that matters. But all the ADS cannons are going to get destroyed. Once we get over here, we'll sink ourselves to this last, this second ADS cannon here. Manual targeting enabled. And because we already whittled down the HP of the core in the middle, uh, we don't have to worry about using that last ADS cannon. Yeah, so due to some, uh, due to some weirdness with the uh, ADS cannon, ADS cannon destroyed. it turns out that we actually didn't destroy the one on the right, so I had to go all the way back to destroy it. I have no idea what happened. I swore I heard a confirmation noise. Maybe I just didn't damage it enough the first time. But either way, now we gotta travel through all these space mines. Let's just put it this way. There is a reason why I wait until... Is why it, there, There's a reason why I saved the middle core for last. It's so I don't have to go through all these space mines when traveling to the last core. And I can just stay right by the door and it's all done. I've got a transmission loaded and ready to go. Exit. So that's how we deal with that. Just in general with like any strat, just save the middle core for last. Recommended. Yes! Finally! USM Valor, this is Kendra Daniels on the USG Ishimura. Do not open the escape pod. Repeat, do not open that escape pod. Do you read? Singularity core is okay. I could salvage it, install it on that shuttle. We're fucking out of here. Where's the Valor now? It's near comms. Keep us stable. Isaac, I'll grab a suit and EVA onto the Valor. Meet me there. We'll find that core together. Let CEC clean up their own mess. I'm saving what I can. So instead of proceeding with the main quest on the Valor, 
I have decided to go ahead and finish the premeditated malpractice side quest. Because like I said, that prototype uh, that prototype stasis unit is like absolutely invaluable. And because we are actually doing backtracking, this means that we are going to be dealing with the aggressor AI quite a lot. So a lot of enemies are going to spawn in our way exactly like this. But it's okay, we got... We got stasis. We got some stasis units banked up for just an occasion like this. So our next move is to make it all the way over to hydroponics. We'll stop at every stasis recharge that we can on the way. Of course, this dipshit decides to jump down directly in front of us, but fortunately we got a vent. that just to show you that I didn't take any damage that I still haven't taken any damage So upon arriving at hydroponics, there's also a bathroom here that we didn't check. I think the uh, toilet here has some boogers in it, doesn't it? No, not this one.
we're going to make our way to the room where I used that uh, very specific strat to take out the infectors. Man, Isaac does like a lot of a lot of just like weird grunts and whatnot. Uh. And it kind of makes it a little hard to tell like when he when he's taken damage and when he hasn't taken damage. There's also a level 3 door here that we can open to get an extra power node. So we'll go to the second floor, and the room is across from the uh, from the power junction box. Man, I just narrowly avoided getting hit. Spitters are pretty awful. just to show that I didn't get hit by any kind of splash damage or otherwise. I also manually refilled my stasis there so that I could uh, stun this pregnant over here. Now we're going to use our newly upgraded stasis module. And as you can see, upon using stasis, it completely stops this enhanced necromorph. Just like dead in his tracks. And it also causes a little bit of damage to said necromorph. So it means that it will do splash damage, so be very careful when you're using it around... Uh, stasis jars or fi fire extinguishers or something like that because like small exploding objects will cause damage to you it also makes uh stasis useful against boogers as well especially if you have the upgraded aoe i don't actually know exactly how much damage it does it just does like aggravated electric damage.
And while we're at it, we're going to uh, respec our weapons again. I decided to uh, dump power nodes back into the pulse rifle. Also decided to sell my uh, my one small health pack that I use for the express purpose of being able to show if I took damage or not. Don't worry, there will be more. Keeping the flamethrower in my inventory, even though I'm about to downgrade it. Because I want to be able to sell it for money. Or sell the uh, ammo for money, I should say. Actually, I decided to downgrade the contact beam because I won't be using the contact beam much during the next chapter, and it's like even unupgraded, the contact beam is pretty good. Oh, I don't know what Pass Carsey is doing there. Why didn't he just? Why didn't he? Why didn't he get? Why didn't he get that pulse rifle upgraded? Oh, right, because you forgot to buy all the pulse rifle or the power nodes. That is why. So each uh, secondary fire node actually does an extra 100 points of damage. Which is worth noting for the uh, contact beam. But the main thing that I want to upgrade is the, uh, is the damage nodes. Reason being, the damage nodes will make it so that it takes fewer shots in order to destroy the Tweaker's uh, stasis modules. So from here, just going to downgrade the contact beam and put the... Just keep the flamethrower in our inventory, but not actually have it equipped. And that is good enough. Now we can make our way back to the uh, USM Valor and continue on with Chapter 9. Yeah, I'm just kidding. That was a past Carsey moment. We're gonna make our way back to. Uh, we're gonna make our way around and start looting some uh, some chests, so we can get some goodies. Or maybe not. No. What did I do this segment again? I guess I decided to use one segment just so I could get back to the bridge after all of the uh, after all of the uh, respecking and uh, side questing I did just there, because I didn't feel like getting destroyed by RNG from the aggressor AI, maybe. Now arriving at the bridge.
Oh, that's right. Okay, so I actually did go backwards through cryogenics so that we could actually go through medical and uh, get some uh, get some more loot. After we open all those level 3 chests, we're going to head back through uh, imaging and diagnostics. Let's go out into zero-g therapy here. There's a level 2 door right here. Some line rack schematics here as well. In reality, I could have actually waited until maybe chapter 11 or something like that to go through this area. We'll head back into the main security area. Go back through here. This is where we uh, exited from the zero gravity area from before. This room is a little tough to get oriented correctly in. And you can see how annoying it is, like, just the inertia can make it so that you don't clear the exit to that shaft quite so easy. Yeah, these item box, or item pickups have really weird triggers. Now we make our way back to the bridge. Now arriving at the bridge. as this room is clear, I decided to go ahead and uh, 
dump a couple more nodes. Max out that cap. Also max out our air just in case. And I would say now is probably good to re-upgrade the contact beam, being that we've populated all the nodes. For the uh, pulse rifle. But past Carsey decided to dump that into flamethrower. Against his better judgment. That was interesting. Physics middleware here is a little odd. And that leaper spawn, especially odd. We gotta make sure that we, uh, Get our stasis ready by the time this tram is uh, reached its destination. We can head back up the elevator. That was a pretty extensive bit of side questing. Exiting zero gravity. Exiting vacuum. Isaac, we have a problem. The Valor's carrying a 12 megaton warhead. The crash hit the torpedo bay hard. I need you to handle that nuke right away before something sets it off. Handle 12 megatons? You know I'm not a nuclear engineer, right? I don't need you to be. Just stabilize the warhead and eject it away from the Ishimura. Christ, Hammond. No one trained you to carve up monsters with a plasma cutter either. You haven't let us down yet. So here's our first encounter with a tweaker. What we're going to do is we're going to use uh, stasis. Be very careful. There's a there's a uh, fire extinguisher here. And uh, the stasis can make the fire extinguisher explode. The soldiers must have had stasis units on their armor. When they were turned, those units merged right into their bodies. Changed them. They're fucking fast, Isaac. Stay sharp. For some reason, there's a uh, 
for some reason, when I came back here, one of the uh, audio logs that you could pick up just uh, didn't spawn in at all. And I can't find it anymore. Before we grab the battery off the wall, grabbing the battery off the wall spawns in Necromorphs. We're going to grab this uh, power node over here. And then we'll open the door. And as the door is opening, we will yank this out and then slip right through. Before any of the uh, enemies will follow us out of that room. Mr. Clark? Hello? I, I must speak with you. Who is this? Dr. Terrence Kine, the Ishimura's chief science officer. I, I studied the marker for the church. I'm done talking to unitologists. But, but, but the planet won't rest until the marker is returned. You, you can't leave. Watch me. Caution. Radiation hazard. So this room will kill you in one hit. We'll start by uh, using the pulse rifle to destroy all of these fuses. Be careful not to hit the warhead in the center. If any of the exploders explode, then they will take the warhead with it and it will be game over. Another exploder will spawn in right there. We'll just go ahead and use stasis on him and then put the battery in because if we take out the exploder. If we take or if we uh, kill the exploder, then more enemies will spawn in. So the best thing is to just go ahead and uh, get rid of his sack and then press the button to disarm the warhead. And then we can kill him once the room is safe. Okay. The warhead's clear. Hammond, this doesn't add up. If the Valor was just on patrol, why bring a nuke? And if they had a target, what's out here except us? Yeah, I know. I'm downloading a munitions report right now. I'll clear your route to the engine room. Grab that singularity core and let's get out of here. So with the tweakers, the, uh, the best strategy that I've found is to use stasis, then you use the pulse rifle to destroy their uh, stasis unit which will put them into an even longer stasis. Rather, a very specific stun animation, I should say, at which point you can dismember their arms. So we got a divider over here. We're just going to lure him down this hallway. Stasis, and then run past. It's always better to just avoid actually fighting the dividers because they are just really annoying to kill. So I just lock them in other rooms. All right, so tweakers, here we go. I use the explosive barrels on that first tweaker. But you can see that I destroyed its stasis unit. And then I just uh, dismembered both of its claws with two shots each. They can still move hella fast if you get rid of their legs. Before I left, I uh, decided to bait that one tweaker into those lasers right there. Using stasis on them just really makes them move at more of a normal speed, I guess. But even then, they're still like zipping around everywhere. It's kind of dumb. My chat lovingly calls them crackheads, and I do have to agree. Online. Caution. Live fire exercise. There's no reward for getting max score here. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna melee all of these uh, all of these red targets until enemies show up and then we have to clear out all the enemies here actually we don't even need to do anything it's just a timer Once 
once again. Destroy stasis. Destroy stasis unit. Bam, 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 bam. Now the next mob is showing up. There is an armored necromorph here. Also a sploder and a couple of uh, a couple of lurkers here as well. So we'll just uh, finish this mob. Yeah, it seems the force gun is pretty good against the armored necromorphs as well. Quarantine lockdown disengaged. Error. Shooting range out of service. Please contact maintenance. So instead of there being an achievement for this one. We just clear this room and then we get an extra power node. So this area is entirely optional. But it's worth it for the loot, I think. Because you get a ruby semiconductor and a, uh, and a power node. We use stasis on that. And another tweaker comes out of here and uh, for some reason he decided he was just going to run over that way. He must have been having a pretty terrible day. Maybe a moment of clarity. Hi, you hearing this? It's Chen. There, on the ring link. I know my own fucking corporal. Chen, come in. Wait for the uh, zappy floor to finish zapping, and then we can go into the munitions team locker room. A lot of goodies here. Just a quick spot check to make sure that we still have health. So this room, there's like, what, eight or nine enemies? As opposed to like, I don't know, the 20 or so enemies that you had to kill in Dead Space Original? I like to go ahead and uh, stun the pregnant there so that it gets electrocuted to death. And then we'll use the force gun to get rid of the lurkers as usual. There's another lurker here. As soon as this lurker is gone, more enemies will spawn in. Although it might be a little earlier. I haven't actually tested it to make sure. Once again, tweaker. Prototype stasis. Destroy their stasis module. Bam, bam. Bam, bam. But yeah, that didn't quite work out as well as I'd hoped. But like with the setup, after you destroy their prototype stasis module, it puts them in, like in, an, in an animation state that makes it really easy to dismember both of their limbs. And from here, with, uh, with this guy, we don't even need to use the contact beam to kill him. He's just going to turn around a bunch. And we have all the stasis in the world. If he looks like he's going close to the other side of that stasis panel, then just uh, move around the boxes and get around the other side and force him to turn around. Just keep using stasis. Quarantine lockdown disengaged. Winner, winner.
Our inventory is a little full at this point. There's uh, no shops on the Valor in the remake like there are in the original game. So we're going to just drop off our, uh, our least valuable item that we got. In favor of plasma energy and more expensive items. And usually our... Usually our least expensive item in our inventory is going to end up being like a small med pack. Just a nuke. They came loaded for war. Seek and destroy. This was no patrol. They knew about the Ishimura. Someone knew. We were all dead from the moment we arrived. So we got to play a deadly game of red light, green light with these flames over here. But I also like to do it in a very specific way, because uh, some enemies will spawn here further down. Yeah, to start, we're just gonna put that box in front of that fire, and that'll let us move right through. And we'll drop it, we'll wait for the uh, engine to fire real quick. And that's our cue to go, and then we'll drag the box over. We'll just put it in front of the flame. And then just move in between the flames, just very nice and very gentle. These flames are diagonal as well, so be very careful. I like to drag this second box over this way as opposed to dragging this first box down the aisle. Reason being, because that hatch that that box there is on top of, a leaper will pop out of it as soon as we manipulate this panel. So I turn on the elevators first, and in doing so, by not turning off the fire suppression system, the two other leapers that also spawn in this room just get killed by the flames. And once that's done, now we can turn off the fire. The only thing that doesn't turn off is the... Uh, is the central engine. Once again, there was a uh, plasma energy drop, so. Dropped a med pack for that because plasma energy is invaluable to me at this point because the drops are not as common for some reason for me at this point. Maybe it's because I have too many weapons. So this guy pops out. He's still a level 1 leaper, so I could have actually just stomped his ass to death. I should have instead of wasting ammo. Shimura's in the red. Someone get the door open. Huh. Chen? Christ, what did that thing do to you? Help me get him to the Kelly. Shoot him. It's not Chen. Shoot him! What? Shoot him! Chen? No. Helmet! You're okay, Chen. Oh, God. Ah! Vital 
Jesus, just flatline heat. Heaven's gone. Heaven's shit. Oh my god. Warning. Cascade failure in all primary systems. Fuck! The battery's gonna blow! Go! Warning. Primary systems failure. Evacuate. We can reminisce about how Hammond had a uh, dignified death later. We got shit to worry about. So that tweaker, for some reason, didn't chase... Well, never mind. I decided to just go ahead and destroy his stasis module. And just make my way out. While the door is opening, I uh, put my back to the door. So that I could uh, use stasis just in case. And we open this door to the right. That takes us back to the, uh, the barracks over here. Again, the game didn't use any, uh, we didn't use any heal whenever we tried. on the ship and their marker. You need to... Wait, someone's opened the door near the bridge atrium? It'll get you to the crew deck, but who's left with that kind of clearance? Isaac, something's up, but we have to get that shuttle. For God's sake, be careful. We're all that's left. Exiting zero gravity. Presently, the aggressor AI is shut off because heading to the crew deck is our next uh, mission. I thought about keeping some line gun racks on the off chance that I would like to experiment, but I was in a bit of a hurry to get this video out, so...
No brownie points for that. There's no goodies in this hallway over here. Once we get out into this uh, tram tunnel over here, we can get the final... We can get the final rig to create the Master Override. It's right here. I probably could have just blown up that barrel right there and destroyed all of them. You. Something on the crew deck must be interfering with the signal. I can guess what that something is. If the marker's active... Shit. The crew deck is locked down, but the deck supervisor might have an override key. The last location I have for her is the gym. How long will it take to install the singularity core on that shuttle? Not long. If no one tries to stop me. Hurry. We can't get the marker in their hands. Now we're going to take the tram back to the bridge so that we can construct our master override key. So now that we have done You Are Not Authorized, now we can start opening the Master Security Chests. Security card. 
So after getting our master code, now we can go in through here. There's our pulse rifle upgrade. The final upgrade for the pulse rifle. So from here at Mining Engineering, this is a good hub to be able to check and get everything. To start, we will take the elevator here that goes back into hydroponics. Our first orange master security chest is right here. Gives us the line gun upgrade. Next up, we're going to go directly across into mining. Locking security card. Locking security card. We got our contact beam upgrade right here. The final upgrade for the contact beam. Which, for some reason, didn't redeem itself for me, I guess. But it's good to know that I have confirmation that I did, in fact, get that contact beam upgrade. So I must have missed another upgrade for the contact beam somewhere else. Finally, we're going to go into the preparation room in engineering. And open this last chest right here for the final ripper upgrade. No, it definitely redeemed. So where was that final upgrade? That's so bizarre.
Go ahead and uh, loot this whole area here. Some force gun energy here. So in the interest of being able to title this video 100%, I'm doing an addendum segment. We'll start from save game number 36. Because that puts us uh, close to the tram. And also exactly where I want to put this segment in the final video. This is uh, future Carsey coming at you from after the run is done. I'm going to try to do this without using any bullets either. But the aggressor AI is absolutely screwing me right now while I'm trying to record this. Now arriving at medical. Doors to the left. Go to the security station directly, not through the bridge or anything like that. We also got to be extra careful because the uh, stasis can actually do damage. So I'm trying to uh, destroy that fire hydrant over there, or sorry, fire hydrant, fire hydrant. Fire extinguisher. Go down here, and then to the right. There's probably going to be enemies in here, right? Yeah, not this time, funny enough. All right, okay. The aggressor AI is being lenient with me right now, which is fine by me. There's that contact beam upgrade. Now we're just going to go back the way we came.
Cliff to the left. stasis on the way out. Should still be an enemy in this room, I think. Yep. Two of them. Now we'll head back to... Crew quarters. Now arriving at the crew deck. And here we go. Just to show that I didn't take any damage here. Grab a little med kit here real quick. Trying to use the med kit. It's not healing us. So we got it. And then I'll just save over slot number 36 again. Now that we got that little addendum segment out of the way. Once we go into this room over here, we can grab the battery. And then we'll just uh, go kind of far away. And then we'll start using the contact beam on these enhanced lurkers. Obviously prioritizing the ones that actually have their tentacles out. So Enhanced Lurkers, obviously, they can turtle up. And uh, they have a crap ton of HP. There's no quick and easy way to kill them, even the Contact Beam. The Zero G basketball minigame, there's really nothing to it. Uh, you get more points if you shoot a basket into the one that is lit up. But really, you should just prioritize just getting a ball in the basket at all. Because you literally cannot fail this minigame as long as you don't miss. Starting level 4 onward like this. The, uh, the hungry, hungry hippos are going to close off the holes. This game is basically like hungry, hungry hippos except in reverse, right?
once we hit level 7, it just enters high score mode. So there's really nothing else that you need to do. If you can hit 100% of your shots, then squeezing out score just becomes RNG anyway. So there's really no point in there being a high score mode. Because there is no further reward for scoring anything more than the uh, minimum number of points required. Now that we're done with that, we'll just drag this battery out, slot it up. And there's our crew deck key that we need in order to be able to proceed with the rest of the chapter. But before we leave, we'll open up the reward lockers, which gives us a bunch of ammo and... A ruby semiconductor and a node. Another armored necromorph here. Two more armored necromorphs, actually. I definitely gotta double check to see if you can actually kill them in one shot with the force gun. Because thems are some skinny arms that you can just take off with one plasma gun shot. That guy, obviously playing dead, he wasn't there before. From here, there's going to be two infectors. We're just going to use contact beam to get rid of them. Just get rid of them immediately. Don't worry, there's going to be no more infectors in here. We don't got to worry about destroying any of the bodies or anything like that. Convergence, thanks to this ingrate. Mercer, wait. Tell me. I want to understand. What is Convergence? But you already know. Dead or living, we all feel the markers to purpose. Don't you want to be reunited? 
but the people you lost. I. Yes. And why not it me? Mr. Temple has refused. But we are so close. Everything that has happened on this Shamora is just the beginning. When you put it that way, you and your marker can go to hell. Hunter is back. That is the wrong elevator past Carsey. What are you doing? We have to destroy this tentacle right here. Again, past Carsey, what are you doing? That's the wrong, wrong place. Now we'll go to the mess hall. But you're on it, right, Isaac? Everything's gonna be just like it was. Silly little fourth wall hallucination message says turn it off. The necromorph writing. There's dividers in here. There's also a ruby semiconductor in here that you can loot. Although, I might argue that you don't even really need it. I needed to come to the other side here in order to get this node. Oh. Get rid of this barricade here. Yeah, it looks like they tried to uh, 
gas out the remaining necromorphs, but uh, I don't think it did its job. Or maybe it was from survivors, I don't know, and Mercer just like killed all of them or something. In any case, you can either use the force gun or you can use the alt fire from the uh, pulse rifle. Two shots from either is good enough. Force energy here. But before we destroy the before we destroy the core there, we're gonna go into the storage room here and we're going to set up our great escape. There's a node over here. Take this. If we destroy that core on that tentacle, then it'll spawn a bunch of enemies. And uh, we don't want to do that yet. So once you destroy the core, you'll spawn in enemies and you'll also spawn in the hunter. This guy over here actually just goes into the vent, so you didn't actually need to don't actually need to shoot him. Destroying that tentacle allows us access to this elevator right here.
Find the shuttle. You need to install the Singularity Core. Isaac! Isaac, can you hear me? Once we enter here, a quarantine event is triggered. I was too lazy. I didn't feel like messing around with these guys. So I just exploded all of them. Damn, is she okay? So that right there, being that it is an enhanced lurker, we have to actually dismember all the tentacles. Because force gun don't work too good on those guys. Neither does any other gun for that matter. Just double checking to make sure that there wasn't a random explosion or something like that. And again, same as in the area before. Don't destroy the core yet. Not unless you want to trigger an appearance of the hunter. Oh yeah, so these larger pipes over here as well that you can sometimes take off the wall, those will actually kill necromorphs in one shot. They seem to be like larger in diameter, but they still work. I'd actually seen them quite a bit up to this point, but I just never thought to use any of them. But whatever, no big deal. It's just another thing that I can use in the next video. Flip on the door circuit here. The door circuit will open up these next two doors over here to the right. The deluxe shift bunks. So, uh, who wants to go bowling? Seven split. That was terrible. Locking security card. And then we go back here this way to get the uh, final flamethrower upgrade as well as a gold semiconductor. Also, for some reason, I can't just straight up pick up that credit shit right there.
sorry, late shift. How are you? I, um... My mother, she's, um... Octavia? How's she doing? How's she doing? <laughs> she's dead, Nicole. They both are. She killed my dad, then herself. Church. They uh, took the bodies before I could. Uh... Oh my God. Oh Isaac, I'm so sorry. Fucking oh, told you. Stop washing. Stop it. Just stop talking. You said she was herself again. You said she would be better at home. I trusted you. God. You might as well have killed him yourself. She was better. You told me to leave for the Ishimura. You, you pushed me to... You know what? Go to hell, Isaac. Nicole. Nicole! Nicole! I didn't... Isaac, it's me. I wish I could talk to you. She wanted to talk. I am sorry. I can make it right. I'm sorry. I can save us both. About everything. This scene here kind of contextualizes a lot of Isaac's guilt. Retrieved. Is it recording? Can't miss anything. There's just cruelty. He was deciphering how the marker's signal affects the brain and how... Oh my god. Ah, uh, Dr. Brenner. Let me guess. Terence Kine let you know. Shame he's not here. He didn't understand how this tragedy represents a chance to cure death. Go on. These creatures. Reanimated tissue, cellular immortality. I, I know we've never seen eye to eye, but I understand now. There's so many I should have saved. So you came to me? Because you've learned how to communicate with the marker. I'm so close. I, I thought it must have the secrets that I need. You are a woman of science, not faith. Leave the marker to me. These are your autopsy notes. Very thorough. You'll need them peer reviewed, of course. And poor Terence isn't here to help you. Yes. There's only one man I trust now. Very thorough indeed. And useful for Mr. Harris's next surgery. No related rig activity has been logged. And that's the end of the Nicole's side quest chain. Now we can destroy the core and exit.
after that room right there. We can finally get the uh, final upgrade. Any further suit upgrades can only be gotten in New Game Plus from here on out. So take note of that for New Game Plus. So once we destroy the uh, the tentacle core in this area, there will be infectors that spawn in. Best thing to do is to just uh, take these dead unitologist bodies and just uh, just chuck them in here. If the kinesis will grab. If done correctly, there will be no bodies for the infector to, well, infect. With the exec quarters key card, we can go in here. Security card. Another gold semiconductor in there. And that master chest. And then one final note in here.
Now we can destroy the core. There will be another quarantine event on the way out. Somehow one body just miraculously managed to, uh, make it out of there. I, I don't know what happened. Once we destroy the, uh, Necromorph and the, uh, the two Necromorphs and the, uh, Infector here. I'll just wax these other two guys. Quarantine lifted. Turn the marker to Aegis 7. It'll stop the outbreak? Exactly. But we need the shuttle to return it to the planet. You have a singularity core. And I can let you through. So what do you say? If it'll end this for good, deal. Excellent. I, I, I can distract Mercer, but not for long. And get the marker to the shuttle bay quickly. Thank you, Mr. Clark, for helping me fix my mistakes. <laughs> oh yeah, one thing that I just completely forgot to mention like at all is that there's no stasis recharge stations like throughout this entire chapter except for like the final room
As soon as we head down this lift to the marker, there's going to be another quarantine event. Activated. Because this chapter loves throwing quarantine events at us. And if that's not bad enough, the marker actually gradually recharges their HP. So we're just going to kill them in one shot. Any opportunity we get. We use gravity wells from the force gun to group them all together. And then use grenades from the... Uh, pulse rifle to finish them off. Now we can send the marker into cargo. Ah, you have it. Now install the singularity core on the shuttle. I'll come help you load the marker. Damn, Mercer's close, hurry! <laughs> So this is a uh, really difficult gimmick fight coming up. As soon as we test fire the shuttle, the shuttles, we're going to encounter the uh, hunter one more time. We'll pull out the uh, force gun, then we'll just knock him over, right? Use the force gun to knock him over, and then what we're going to do is we're going to wait until the hunter goes through a vent. And then we're just going to very gently just like stagger all these guys 
with the gravity wells. Going out of my way to uh, kill all the enemies in this particular cluster because there was a tweaker in there. And after we've uh, used stasis, after we've, you know, done everything that we can with the force gun to pin Harris in place, we'll burn him to death. And that's that. as we're getting yanked into this hole over here get the pulse rifle ready because we have one more uh, strangely placed leviathan tentacle when the leviathan isn't even on the ship anymore also the aggressor AI just randomly decided to put a necromorph like right there Sick bug. We had invincibility frames there, though. Do you read me? Mr. Clark! Mr. Clark, come in! Oh, shit. You're alive. Help and be. Fuck all men, too. Kendra? Yeah. But every alert on the Ishimura is screaming. Critical damage to internal systems. The marker just ripped right through the ship. Something pulled it down to the cargo bay. Kind. Pilot the shuttle to the hangar. I'm going after the marker. Of course. Amelia, quickly. Wait, Dr. Kine. That guy's lost it. He killed the captain. We can't trust him near the marker. He says returning it to the planet is the only way to end this. We've got to try. I'm heading to cargo. You ping Nicole's rig and tell her where to go. Leave it to me. Thanks. When I get the marker, we're all getting out of here. I also used a, uh, tried to use a med pack there just to show, just to demonstrate that I didn't actually take any damage from that bugged out necromorph there. Now we're done with cargo bay. We're going to make our way back to, uh, or sorry, now we're done with crew quarters and we're going to make our way to the cargo bay next. Flight deck tram control. Mr. Clark, we're approaching the hangar bay. We'll meet you there with the marker. Now arriving at flight deck, tram control. Yes, Amelia Sue. We'll send the hive mind back into the darkness. So glad you gave that guy our only escape shuttle. Shit, Isaac. Those things you've killed, their biomass is pulled down in the cargo bay. It's recombined itself into... Well, it's something huge, and the marker's embedded right in the middle. How the hell do we do this? I've got the Ishimura's cargo cranes. They can move half a bay of mining gear, no problem. If whatever's down there wants to wrestle with the marker, I'm in. Override the safeties, and yes, it might work. But hurry, we're losing critical systems fast. I actually went the wrong way here. We uh, use stasis to get through this door. We can open up this level one lock over here. 
which has a power node in here. I decided to burn a segment just to uh, set this room up, take out these enemies nice and slow. An exploding sack from the Sploder Necromorphs will actually kill a wall guardian in one shot as well. Security card. And we're just going to destroy all of the tentacles as soon as we can. So that that way, whenever the marker is moving along the tracks later, we don't have to worry about anything stopping it. Aside from the two bridges in the middle. It's recommended here that you actually take the uh, the claws from the pregnant necromorph and uh, use it to kill the lurker that was inside it. Clearance confirmed. Ping is in this locker over here. We'll go ahead and loot it in advance so we're not like trying to loot it on the way out or anything like that. Emergency. Internal hull breaches detected. Yeah, in that last segment, I don't know what the deal was with that Necromorph. It just... It just... The body just spawned there and never got up. Maybe it's just there to make you feel paranoid. The game just spawns in a dead mech Necromorph. 
aggressor AI thing, probably. Anyhow, we're going to destroy that shelf there, kind of like the way that we did in uh, Chapter 2. And then we're just going to uh, impale these jerks. So, because these guys have armor, the uh, armored necromorphs here... They can't be killed in one shot from uh, from a rod. But there's more than enough rods to be able to kill every necromorph here. So that's that with the, uh, that's that for the rods here for the time being. Caution. Access bridge is obstructing transfer. This last pregnant over here will just, uh, sever its arms. The more to impel you with, my dear. Access bridge is obstructing transfer. Oh yeah, so before we go across the bridge, we need to uh, sever this tentacle. We can do that with the contact beam. One shot. I'm trying to bait out this other tentacle right here. We can just go right across here and... Yeah, yeah, the tentacles, they will uh, retreat just as quickly. So you have to kind of stay out long enough to bait out an attack. That's the only way you're going to be able to charge the contact beam in time to be able to destroy the core. Also, make sure you're not too close, as usual, because the contact beam does have blowback damage. Go ahead and stomp this out over here. Keep impaling these guys. We're going to save that stasis there. My recommendation is to save that stasis jar right there as our uh, escape plan. But uh, I actually didn't have any time to utilize it correctly. So I just ended up stasising and uh, using Plasma Cutter. Caution. Access bridge. You know, I suppose the uh, the sploters are probably pretty good for taking out the tentacles, too. Fortunately, the game doesn't spawn in, like, infinite enemies like it did in the original Dead Space. So after we clear out all these enemies, we can just uh, hit the switch again, move it along, and uh, make our way over to the elevator, and then GTFO. I'm reading a cargo transfer to the hangar bay. The marker. Good work, Mr. Clark. On our way. Kine, your flight path goes by airlock 19. I can get there from the computer core. Emergency. A pickup. Internal yeah, we'll health be there. region detected. Can you make it to the airlock alone? No movement on the cameras. I I'm just gonna run for it. Wish me luck. Emergency. Deck evacuation protocols are in effect. Emergency. All personnel proceed to your designated safe zone immediately. Fuck, it's my brother. On the monitor, he's right by the airlock. Don't let this place get to you. Kendra, we're out of time. I... He's not there. I can make it if I run.
Status anomaly detected. Quarantine activated. So from here. We'll equip the pulse rifle because the first enemy we're going to see is a tweaker. Take him out quickly. Next enemy is a spitter. Same deal. Queue up our pulse rifle again. As long as we stay over here, any errant spitters are not going to get us. But of course, we had a... We had this guy decide to uh, get in the way while we were trying to dismember that other uh, that other tweaker right there. But more often than not, as long as I angle myself so that I'm behind this bar right here, that spitter will uh, have a lot more difficulty trying to actually hit me. But this was a uh, this was a pretty frustrating mob to deal with. Quarantine lifted. Mr. Clark, your colleague safely on board. My name is Kendra Daniel. Stand by, Isaac. He's bringing the shuttle in now. You can see that that spit projectile narrowly missed my head by a bee's dick. Isaac, we can't run the automated loading controls. Must be the damage to the ship. We're losing time. The hive mind is down there. Kind, relax. I'll turn off the gravity in the hangar, then I can load the marker by hand. All right. No, don't worry, Amelia. They understand. <sighs> Jesus. Man, that particular mob was so unbelievably frustrating that it required its own save. Before we start to move the marker, we're going to go ahead and uh, set up the tracks. We'll keep that one angled the way that it is, but uh, the middle track and the far left track, we want those to be parallel to the main track. We're going to reroute the power really quick so that we can go over here and get this uh, this footlocker over here which has a diamond semiconductor hit the road chair
seems as though the enhanced lurkers can be destroyed in one explosive as long as their tentacles are out. But I still need to test that just to make sure. Oh man, if I was any closer, that explosion actually would have got me. Just gotta be careful with that prototype stasis because yeah, it can it can blow it can blow up barrels. Especially when you don't want it to. Just wait forever for this lurker to finally spawn tentacles, or maybe not. I'll just rotate the track one more time. If you do this correctly, you should only have to rotate the tracks twice. All the enemies in this room need to be killed before you can continue. And of course, when they get close to the marker, their tentacles might take a few more shots to kill. A few more shots to sever, I should say. Decided to finish off that last one with my little fuck you cannon. Exiting zero gravity. On board. Come quickly. Go open the hatch for him. Aegis 7 was off limits. The planet was one big government experiment. The marker, this divine artifact, it was built by human hands. That's impossible. It's an alien world. The miners dug up the fucking thing. After it was planted here a few hundred years ago. Even kind didn't pick up on that. They found the first marker in some crater on Earth. That one. That was real. Alien. Enough to inspire unitology. Our people studied it and reverse engineered this red marker. But they needed somewhere to test it. Aegis 7. You've seen the result. The stuff of nightmares. I thought the old reports were just hysteria. Until I saw what I saw. They sealed off the whole system, buried the records nice and clean. Until CEC got greedy. Those idiots tore each of seven apart and woke up with the old research team left behind. So Earth Gulf sent you to sweep it all under the rug. Damn it, we have to return the marker. If anyone else stumbles across each of seven. It was disappeared once. We can do it again. I've seen how the marker fucks with your head. It must be contained. For 
what it's worth. We made a great team. You'll find another way off the Ishimura. I mean, you're one hell of an engineer. Your experiment's gonna kill us all! Daniels! It was all for nothing. Isaac, come in, it's Nicole. Where are you? In the flight control room. Please, you have to come up here now. There's still a way out for us, but we don't have much time. and remote pilot from here. Bring back the marker and we can return it to Aegis 7. You can make us whole again. I just want to make things right. And let's do it together. Recalling shuttle USG. Procedures. Damn it, Isaac! You don't know what you're doing! I know! I'm finally doing the smart thing! Fucking kidding me! Shit! Warning! Escape pod launch detected from shuttle USG-09. Escape pod. Damn! We lost her. It doesn't matter. She can't escape her fate. But who can? Reprogram the shuttle with our flight path to Aegis 7 and join you on board. Don't leave me waiting. No. One more tweaker before we leave. You know the drill. Stasis, pulse rifle to destroy stasis module. Bam, 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 bam. There's going to be a couple more uh, leapers over here. gonna try to bait them over to the uh, over to the door over here we don't want to use stasis on them because as you know stasis will blow up the barrels and that one just made his way over to the door that I was camped out at 
So these guys are just super annoying. Instead, what I decided to do was, uh, I just ran for it. Hit the trigger immediately. If you're not ready, the miracle must be as terrifying as a nightmare. The planet is restless, hungry. It'll try to eat us alive. But we have the marker. We'll put things back the way they were. We will be whole again. One more node on this side. Stasis recharge station there too. In order to be able to open up the uh, save point over here, we do have to move the marker. So I gotta run back and do that.
This is Sergeant Bram Newman. PSEC evacuation report. The shuttle's gone. Took off and then crashed right back down into the bay. Took a whole crowd with it. Must be a hundred people dead. We've lost the rest of the shuttle. God help us. There's no way out. Anyone hearing this? Do not land. I repeat, do not land on Aegis 7. Fuck the Ishimura. They left us to die. I might actually recommend uh, that you spend this money on ammo instead of nodes. Especially for the uh, the force gun. But I ended up spending it on nodes. Also, we don't need anywhere near this many stasis packs. SP3 on the pulse rifle doesn't actually uh, cause it to do any more damage. The grenades, it just makes it so that your uh, blast radius is wider. Which can be a bit of a double-edged sword. I'm not sure that I like it, honestly. I would prefer my explosions to be a little smaller and more focused. So that I don't get hit by any blowback or anything stupid like that. So from here is absolutely where I decided that I didn't need anywhere near this many uh, rounds of contact ammo. Also decided to put away the, uh, the contact beam. And buy as much force energy as I could buy with what little money I had. Once we open this door, we got uh, two enemies here to deal with, an enhanced necromorph and a uh, and an infector. Yeah! I decided to use the uh, gravity well yeah! and just blow them apart with uh, three primary fires. So because we were only carrying the uh, the plasma cutter and the force gun. More ammo for the force gun will spawn. Also, once we open this door, gotta be very careful with the pulse gun's primary fire because the pulse gun's primary fire will destroy the, uh... There's a fire extinguisher in this room. 
Just like right there on that wall. Around the marker itself, the eye of the storm. They can't stay in it for long. I've seen it. What's this mist? Why there? It amplified. The marker's pulse could be felt across the planet. The dead will sleep. And the living will see what can't be forgotten. As soon as we go through this door, there's going to be another quarantine event. The reason I kept the plasma cutter was because the force gun on its own won't be good enough to take out the uh, enhanced lurkers. Because we need to take our time killing those. But the drop rate for uh, force ammo does seem pretty high. In, in spite of everything. <laughs> Waste nothing, get away. Sorry. Spare nothing to get around these guys. That guy just popped through the floor right there. So obviously I couldn't take my time killing that lurker as it came out. Yeah, it does look like one shot is enough to take out the armored necromorphs. by getting rid of him. And there only seems to be uh, just this lurker left to deal with. As you can see, a single force gun shot didn't even really do anything besides, like, repel them. Maybe he made it so that it, one of their tentacles might take one fewer shot to take out. But that's all that's left here is these lurkers. And of course, as per usual, Plasma Cutter loves just phasing right through things when the crosshair is like right on the tentacles. Another wave of enemies will pop in, but it's a very small one. Lifting quarantine. Can you miss the Isaac? Yeah. And your parents? Your mother was a unitologist. She believes. She believes so much it killed her. Is this what she would have wanted? She did. Would that make this easier? Maybe it's a good thing I'll never know. We passed the HP check. So we're okay. While the, uh, while the marker is uh, 
moving on its own, we can go ahead and loot these other rooms here. Connection. What's it say? Power failure detected. Tether generator. Gravity control. One of the ground side gravity tethers. Maybe a busted power line. I'm on it. Please hurry. We can't fail now. So as you can see, the force gun makes extremely short work of the wall guardians. Just primary fire absolutely destroys them. Now entering tether control. Cross contamination field engaged. Yeah, be very careful on the way up, because uh, if the fan hasn't started, it will. I haven't actually explored the rest of this room, so there might be uh, a power node or something that I might be missing. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter too much. It's late in the game. Let me know what I missed in the comments below. Once we uh, walk over this way. We'll spawn in some more enemies. Including a brute, as you can see over there. Just gonna funnel them all over to the door. Just be careful that the door doesn't close on us. Another brute over there. We can also do the uh, gravity wells and pull over the uh, pull over the sploters. The sploters could actually get rid of an arm from the brute. This is actually an enhanced brute, by the way.
Man, I just narrowly avoided getting hit by that exploding barrel. That is such an awkwardly placed exploding barrel. But that's fine, it's just... Stunning him and laying into him with the plasma cutter is more than enough. It's a bit tough to take this room slow. Pass the HP check. Now we'll just run back across this bridge and we will loot everything. Absolutely everything that we can. Security card. One more master lock override here. Has two, is it three power nodes? There's at least two in there. Three power nodes. Probably would have been in my best interest to actually put the contact gun back in my inventory to be able to farm up just a little bit more contact ammo. But it actually doesn't really matter much. Destroy this core over here. And wreck this necromorph here too. force gun. There's uh, two more necromorphs here. Yeah. Just group them together and... Uh, Three force gun shots to do them in is good enough. We'll zigzag in between these flashers over here. Take these chests, and then we'll destroy this last core over here. And once we do, a divider will spawn in. Gonna use stasis to get by him. Pickens were kind of slim for that chest right there. But as per usual with the dividers, there's not really much point in trying to shoot them.
we'll just use the uh we'll just use the stasis to stun them if they get too close Four plasma pistol shots will be enough to take out every tentacle that you see. This room is pretty brutal. Of course, we're just going to black hole these guys. That one worked out pretty good. A uh, lurker, enhanced lurker, spawns out of that pregnant right there. We're just going to stay over here and uh, try to take out the lurker. Next tentacle core is on the other side. There's also the final file right under that tentacle. Isaac, the Hive Mind is coming! You have to make us whole! Using gravity wells to, uh... ...group these guys together. Blow up the exploder. Finish off any lurkers that pop out. The only way to really guarantee that a lurker does not spawn is to take the claws off the pregnant. After we bait out an attack from that tentacle, run the core, kill it. We'll go and pick up this final file over here.
this file seems to describe the transformation from a human corpse into an infector. Being that it's talking about a proboscis with feelers. Now we're going to make our way over to the final control panel here. Let the marker make its way over. As far as uh, ammo expenditure goes, though, maybe gravity wells aren't completely worth it. Consumes a lot of ammo compared to just straight up using the primary fire. But still has a lot of potential. is about to fall. I gave you a chance to come around, Isaac. But if you still won't see it, I'll help you. One last time. Wrigley override. This time, watch to the end. <laughs> Isaac, it's me. Oh, I wish I could talk to you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about everything. Oh, I just wish I could talk to someone. It's all falling apart here. I can't believe what's happening. It's strange. Such a little thing. Just had a talk. That's all this research was in the end. Not much, is it? Just trying to make it listen when he begged for convergence. Listened. Make this stop, I said. Maybe it understood, but...
for her and Nicole for you. Enough morphine for two elephants. The shuttle. I can still make it before she leaves. You also have to kind of wonder, like, how much of that is Kendra actually being a psychopath versus the marker just like commanding her to kill or something like that. Whatever, she got her just desserts. After we have successfully looted everything, we're going to make our final preparations for the final boss fight. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to sell all of our plasma cutter ammo and all these med packs. Well, maybe not all the plasma cutter ammo, but we definitely want to put the contact beam and the pulse rifle back in our inventory. Try to get around. Yeah, that's more than enough contact beam. Pass car seat. What? What? That's more than enough. Get some pulse rifle ammo for fuck's sake. Keep a little bit of stasis just in case, because we do have to fight regular enemies. I'll go ahead and expend the rest of these nodes.
any knives. Like, I mean it. start this fight with some 700 IQ looting right here. Basically every time it slams its tentacle that's when we want to hit the hive mind, one of the cores on the hive mind. And every time we hit a core it's going to vomit a bunch of uh, goop I guess. And then we have to uh, circle around. And after a slam, hit the core with your secondary fire from the uh, from the contact beam. And again, he's going to vomit again. hit one of the five cores on the face whenever it slams a tentacle. It'll vomit again. It does, I don't know, that's like a weird animation. It just like, it just like cancels and just like starts spitting. It's another slam. Shoot him. And this should be the last one, the last time that it spits. These, uh, Big chunky things right here. As long as we stay away, we shouldn't have to worry about them uh, exploding and causing any extra damage to us. Their AoE is pretty thin. I popped a heal really quick so you could see that uh, it didn't actually heal me. This is actually where I like to use the pulse ammo here. Although it's probably just as well to uh, use the gravity wells and use the primary fire from the uh, force gun. Just group them all up with gravity wells because there's a lot of these guys here. So you can actually make uh, you can actually make the boss take a few less cycles if you leave one of the uh, if you leave one of the sploder sacks alive. So what's going to happen next is it'll slam tentacles to slam strafe left. And when that opens up, yeah, if you throw a splutter sack back at it, it'll actually destroy three of the cores. But now in between uh, core destruction, it's going to start vomiting a uh, line of bubbling liquid. Which is meant to uh, restrict where you can run. But you have no control over where it uh, spits the first line of bubbling liquid, even though it seems like you do. 
because in the later half of the fight, it'll actually uh, do several lines. The bubbling liquid vomit. Just take it nice and easy. So from here, more bubbling liquid. It doesn't bubble for too long, though. Unfortunately, I got pinned down in the smaller side of the map. So we have to bait out where the tentacles are going to land. And it's a bit of a... It's really tough to do, actually. They just sort of home in on your last known position after a certain timing window. I even had one of them block, so I wasn't able to actually destroy a core that phase. I had to go at it for an additional phase. try and uh, head toward the bubbling acid and then bait out the tentacle shot over there only one core left to go this time he vomits once twice Check the back of the uh, vomit trail, though, before he spits out more vomit, and that'll actually be your window in order to get by. Fortunately, this last phase, we have a lot of room to move around in because of where he vomited. I'm not entirely sure there is a way to manipulate that. There we go. GG. And from here, I decided to use the primary fire on the contact gun. Once he, like, slows down a little bit. Which is like when he draws us closer. And there we go, that's it. That's GG. It's me. Oh, I wish I could talk to you. I'm sorry.
And that's been Dead Space Remake. No damage on hard. 100% walkthrough. Thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I also have no damage runs of Dead Space 1 original and Dead Space 2 on my YouTube channel. Also a lot of other no damage playthroughs. Some with saves, some without. My next plan is going to be to work on an actual impossible mode playthrough, even though all of the strategies in this video will also work on impossible difficulty. But I just want to go over this again. Get uh, something slightly more, uh, slightly more refined. Less complicated to follow. But otherwise, this should serve as a very thorough playthrough. This run was recorded live on my Twitch at twitch.tv slash carcinogensda. Say hi, YouTube. But I have plans to do a New Game Plus video, an Impossible Mode video, and probably a Plasma Cutter only video. I'll figure that out as I go. Just, uh... Go check it out. If you would wish to support my bad challenge run habit, you can do so on my Patreon at patreon.com slash carcinogensda. Also join my Discord community at discord.gg slash carcinogensda. There is the, uh best place to get updates on whenever the stream goes live, whenever a new video is published. Maybe even other community incentives as I go along. But anywho, I'll see you guys next video. Thank you for watching. Have yourselves a good rest of your day.